It is your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships that fund so much of what we do here in this operation. And then we're more than happy for the TV show after it's aired live, then be leaked out onto the web to tens of millions of people. That's our goal. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live, and we are now 24 hours in to this historic transmission. It is the Infowars.com Money Bomb 2012. We uh, this is the fifth annual. It's listener motivated. Five years ago, listener started a money bomb and said, "Hey, you should expand what you're doing." And we were about 10 crew members there. Now we're more than 50, and we reach I don't know four or five times uh, what we did in the past and i just want to say the crew has done an absolutely amazing job and all of you that have donated at infowars moneybomb.com you've done an incredible job i want to thank you all gerald salente uh is coming up uh, kicking off the first hour of the radio show because it's the radio shows three to four hours long every day that's four hours actually on the satellite uh we don't always do four hours but the point is uh that uh, we're here we're live it is the 19th day of October 2012, a very upsetting interview with David Icke for almost two hours that I just came off of, and it mentally is taxing to hear that information, but uh, it's painful because so much of what he's getting into uh, with the Jerry Sandusky and other top BBC, you know, host and people caught in giant pedophile networks connected to the royal family, mainstream news, I mean, it's just confirming everything. Prince Charles saying basically he's Dracula reincarnated. I mean, it's just all, it, it, it's, it's way too crazy. Uh, and it's all right there. Uh, and you've got um, you know, this Jimmy Savelle, uh, the, you know, the, the guy that helped children in England, who was an obvious pervert, weirdo, said, called the kids a little slave, sorted, boast at the dark truth about a friend, Jimmy Savelle, by the biographer who tried to unmask him, and now it's all coming out. It just absolutely blows me away that, 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 that we've let evil people get in the positions of power. That's why you end up getting human sacrifice in every culture. Uh, it's because the very, very worst get into control. Uh, and they just seek to do absolutely horrible things. And, and now all the wars and the torture and the secret arrest and the warrantless wiretapping and the uh, all of it coming to a head. Uh, by the way, we covered the headline yesterday. Joseph Sticklitz has come out, the Nobel Prize winner, and said Europe's in a depression. I thought Gerald Salente and I were pessimist porn dealers for pointing out this was happening. So more and more of it is all admitted, uh, and they're really gearing up towards Iran. They've cut off the Iranian uh, cable network in Europe. All the previous saber-rattling, that didn't happen. So that's a big sign, and you've got the big proxy war to bring down Syria. Then they go into Iran. That's always been the plan. Uh, it looks like we're headed into very serious times, whether it's this year or early next year. Uh, it's all happening. You know, uh, Max Kaiser, who's joining us later in the day, uh, in the third hour, he, he says um, it'll all in basically implode by April, but th you could have cities burning and then, you know, uh, whatever, and then the news would say, well, you know, unemployment's at zero percent and government loves you and everything's fine. And this is the greatest time of your life. I mean, they could be lowering your dead kid into a coffin into the ground and they'd say, look, your child's dancing beautifully. You know, it's just just all pure lies shoveled at us, an empire of lies by a bunch of uh, control freaks uh, and Jerry Sandusky types running around uh, having their way with us. I mean, I personally have had enough. I personally have had enough on so many fronts uh, that I don't even know, you know, what to say anymore. It, it's just over the top, and we're going to be talking with Gerald Salente, who's been gracious enough uh, to join us coming up in a moment. Um, we need to buy some better TV boards. The ones we have don't work too well. They're pr not even really prosumer. Uh, that's going to cost a lot of money. I need to get the satellite uplinks and a bunch of other equipment, and that stuff's for like half a million dollars. Um, so that's why we're having InfoWars Money Bone. InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com and uh, 48 hours. And again, thank you all for donating. It's, it's really important for people to go to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com and donate. 
or buy the products and videos and things, T-shirts that are for sale. That also goes towards the Money Bomb at InfoWarsShop.com or call 888-253-3139. It's Friday, 48-hour transmission. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live, and we're going to be here for another 24 hours. We just did 24 hours of continuous live transmission, except for a few special reports that we've premiered here on air and some of the past reports. Incredible job to everybody from Congressman Walter Jones, Greg Pallast, Sean Stone, John Rappaport, Mike Adams, Webster Tarpley, George Norrie, James Wesley Rawls, uh, Linda West and all their guests, Jakari Jackson, Russell Dowden, Dan Badandi, Syrian Girl, Rob Dude, David Icke. And now that takes us up. We're going to ask Alex later with Christy because I ran over with David Icke. Gerald Salente, Michael Bagneric, Max Kaiser, Joseph Farah, Amber Lyon, Larry Pinckney, John B. Wells, Darren McBreen, David Knight, David Ortiz, Dan Badandi, Paul Watson, Lord Christopher Moncton, Joel Skousen, and a bunch of others. You know, it's funny. I never called Billy Corrigan or anybody else of the celebrities I know to get them on during the show. I just got too busy. But then Billy Corrigan, just now getting on a plane, I don't know. He didn't say don't tell people this, uh, but I'm trying, I'm trying to get him on when he gets off the plane. He says, hey, Alex, it's Billy. I'm at an airport in St. Louis. The TSA is doing random pat-downs as people are getting on the plane. Five agents just pulled people out of line. Full body. The people look in total shock. Agents all stone-faced and, and looking at everybody suspiciously awful. Yeah, and, and they yell freeze, and, they, and when you, this is, I've seen this, when someone ha, has a Burger King drink, and they're standing at the line, it's handed to them, and they go, let me see that, and they stick a thing in it. We've shown video of Starbucks coffee and them doing it, but I, I've seen it with a Burger King in an airport. Was it Atlanta? I forget. The point is, we've all seen this, and, 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 and it, it's all about total domination and control. And the TSA, psychologists have said it's teaching kids to let pedophiles touch them. You know, the test touch they do, the Sanduskies do. And uh, it's just total domination. It's a total act of domination. Now, listen, we covered this yesterday. It's all over the news. Nobel Prize winning for economics, Joseph Stiglitz, former head of the World Bank, uh, chief economist there, says, hey, you know, it's a depression in Europe. It's going global. Wow, well, Gerald Salente has been saying that for four and a half years. So have I. I mean, but they said we left the recession four years ago and everything's great. And oh, did you see those new unemployment numbers? Oh, yeah. I mean, it is literally ridiculous. I mean, they can tell us the moon is made out of, uh, you know, licorice next or Swiss cheese. Uh, and, 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 and here is Gerald Salente of the uh, Trends Journal, uh, TrendsResearch.com, uh, joining us. And uh, again, I, hands down, he is everybody's favorite guest. Uh, and uh, so you want him, you got him. Uh, right here, and we don't do pre-interviews. It's whatever he basically wants to cover and, you know, points I want to ask. But, but Gerald, I just got to ask you. I mean, it's coming to a head with the TSA. They're now at highway checkpoints taking people into trailers and grabbing their genitals. I mean, I don't fly now, basically, unless I have to because of it. I won't fly with my wife and kids because I can't put up with it. Uh, and, and now they've got army checkpoints popping up, not just drills everywhere. I mean, they are, we're going into martial law. They're just not going to call it that. Uh, Jumbotron's going up at Mall of America. Walmart saying, don't trust anyone but big sis. Uh, Obama announcements to people's phones. I mean, we are going into a science fiction system. Why is the ruling class turning the heat up a thousand times? I mean, this is just, I feel like I'm in fantasy land right now. Well, we said when the crash began in the panic of 08, that we said that after all of the recovery failed, they would take us to war. And taking us to war takes its shape in different ways. And the war now is to control the people. Look at the numbers that just came out two days ago. Oh, violent crime is up 18%. What a shock. Blow me away. How could that have happened? You know my saying, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And by the way, before we go on, I want to thank you so much for all you are doing, for how hard you and your team are working and how dedicated you all are. And I'm listening to that lineup of guests that you have. And there's nothing in any of the media, mainstream or otherwise, that could match a ticket like that. And so thank you very much for what you're doing. And it also came into my mind many, well, about 
or four years ago about that you did that expose on Obama when everyone was still drinking the Kool-Aid called the Obama deception. And I encourage everyone to take a look at that because it fit right in with our motto, the signature of the Trends Journal, history before it happens. And that's what you did with the Obama deception. With myself and others that were on there, we showed the history of how this would play out when he just started playing the role as commander and chief. And then, before I answer your question, please, after I get off the air, uh, we'd like to also contribute to keeping this money bomb growing so you could have the best equipment, the best satellite hookups, and get this message around the world. Because as Joseph Stiglitz said, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, yeah, it's crashing over there in Europe. No kidding. I, I, would, I would have never guessed. Couldn't be because they have 25% unemployment in Greeks. No. Couldn't be because 80,000 people took to the streets yesterday in Greece, protesting again, the fourth one this month. No, no, that had nothing to do with it. Couldn't be because of those millions of Spanish that are taking to the streets vir virtually weekly and circling the parliament because of the poverty that's being imposed upon them, the money grab being taken from them and given to the banks. No, no, that would have nothing to do with the depression. They only have 25% unemployment officially over 50% unemployment for the young people in the country. So the whole system is collapsing around the world. Oh, I forgot. The wars in Libya. You remember that humanitarian mission? Hey, I saw the commander-in-chief yucking it up with John Stewart. I didn't watch it. I only watched a clip. Yeah. The commander-in-chief sitting on a cheap two-bit clown show talking about foreign policy. Would you imagine Eisenhower sitting there? That's how low the bar has fallen in America. And check it out. Obama says about Libya and the problems that they had, we're going to fix it. Oh, yeah, you're going to fix it. Hey, just like you fixed it in Afghanistan with the 30,000 troops that you sent over there. And what did they do? Oh, they got killed, a lot of them, wiped out a lot of people. Oh, 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 it didn't make the front page of the toilet paper of record yesterday. It was buried on page 12. They killed another three little Afghan children. But who cares? Because it's the presidential reality show. So the whole thing is collapsing, and what are they doing? They're distracting us at every moment. Last week it was Big Bird. This week it's about Romney's binder. And no one is speaking about the issues. Both of these little boys are, are just going on all the talk shows, all the yucking it up. <laughs> I love the way they laugh. They were criticizing Biden for his behavior when he was debating Ryan, you know? The, the Cheshire cat against the mouse. That's what it looked like to me. And here's uh, uh, Biden. <laughs> Check it out. Go to the, uh, look at the, the dinner that Obama, the Al Smith dinner and Romney were out yesterday. And you see the picture now. <laughs> I used to work in politics. That's what they do. They're a bunch of phonies. It's always, <laughs> and all the stooges around them laugh on cue. So it takes it to the bigger level about you talking about all these leaders in all these different positions that are leading us to destruction. It's the same in 
in Germany with that Merkel. It's the same over there in Spain with Rajoy. It's the same over there in Italy with three card Monty. It's the same everywhere. It's the club and they're destroying us. And the big news today that, hey, we got to talk about Romney's binder. Oh, oh, and I love the other one, his boy Tag. I love the names, Mitt Tag. Yeah, you're it. He was going to come down there swinging. Oh, yeah, swinging at Obama. What was he going to do, toss a swing at him? These guys never fought a day in their lives. All they are are big mouths, so it's not making the news. Just a minor little story. Eh, doesn't make much difference. They just did a deal yesterday, today, in, in, uh, in Europe, in Brussels. It's happened. The banking systems have merged. They have now taken control, sovereign control, over all of the banks throughout Europe and have now put it under the one bank in Brussels. Now it's a new central bank. There is a new world order. No, it's not the Illuminati. You don't have to go find it someplace hiding. It's in front of everybody's eyes, Alex. The new world order is the banking order. It's an old world order. They kind of try to cover it up, and they're covering it up again. This is not news that's making the news. And, and as you said, it's, it's in the paper, but in the back of it, it's like, oh, yeah, and now the country's all sovereignty will be given to the private bank. And that's the way it is, and you're going to take your taxes and pay it to foreign bankers and tell you how lazy you are. How's that sound? And, and they call it a world government and brag they've conquered us, and the Rothschilds and Rockefellers, as you know. Financial Times has reported they just merged their holdings. So it, it, it's a global government, global merger happening right now. We'll be back with Gerald Salente. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live here. Gerald Salente with us five minutes to the next hour. Uh, he is the uh, editor and publisher of the Trends Research Journal. And uh, you can visit his uh, site at what trendsjournal.com or trendsresearch.com it's excellent and we're doing the money bomb not my idea five years ago um listeners did it and it, it, it helped us get extra capital to move into a bigger office and expand studios and we're now five years later we don't reach three million um, a week we reach about 15 million one way or another and now we want to do free to air satellites so people all over the world can get the nightly news and other shows and uh, news vignettes that we know we can get on TV stations, not just here, but all over the world. People in major cable systems in Europe and England and also in the U.S. already download the nightly show that PrisonPlanet.tv viewers see. And they edit it and put it out on their own cable system. So it's just going to explode uh, once we do this. Uh, very, very excited uh, and, and, and working towards it. Uh, but again, we don't have big global sponsorship. We don't have banker bailout money like MSNBC where they take your money and then give it to them or give it to energy companies. Uh, Gerald, continuing how big a deal this is, you've got the Rothschilds and Rockefellers merging. Uh, that happened a month ago, a sign that the whole world's coming together under this. They're announcing a banking dictatorship worldwide. Uh, they're butchering our liberties. How does Iran tie into that and the storm clouds there? And what do you see happening in the election? Well, on Iran, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm quite upset about what I just saw. In Florida, they're running ads, campaign ads, featuring Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, warning about that red line and no one's to tell Israel that they have a red light and how Iran's this great threat. I want to read to you a quote from our Autumn Trends Journal. It just went out last week. Mr. Prime Minister, you want a crude, rude, unprecedented, reckless, and risky intervention into the U.S. elections. Who are you trying to replace? The administration in Washington or that of Tehran? That, Alex, was from Shaul Mavaz, the head of Israel's Kadima party, that's the second major party. Could you imagine that a foreign power is injecting themselves into our American election? 
Where are the prostitutes saying what an outrage this is, that somebody should be running ads and telling us that we have to support Israel unconditionally? This is running on, and I'm going to make this clear, I'm not an anti-Semite. I'm not in favor of supporting anybody outside of America. I'm Italian. That's where my money would go first, but I don't want it going there either. So to have this going on, so where is the election going? It's right at the wire. We had changed our forecast. We had believed that Obama was going to win. Now we don't know, and I'll tell you why. Because it's all about performance. Look at what happened. Obama bombed. He was lackluster in the first debate. Foom! His poll numbers shot down. Why? Because it's the presidential reality show. There is no substance. So the second debate, he does better. His poll numbers move up. What did he say of substance? What did o Romney say of substance in the last debate? How about nothing? There was one guy, Obama, trying to defend a track record that's undefensible. And then we have Romney with a plan that has no plan. So here's what the campaign debates have come down to. They get asked a question, and then what they do is they repeat the question, and after they repeat the question, they go, and, and kick into the same damn campaign speech we've been hearing over and over for over a year. So all it is about is performance. Look at the language that they used after that so-called debate that was hosted by Candy Crowley from the Cartoon News Network, CNN, featuring Mouse Blitzer, ACDC 180, and the rest of the crown clown <laughs> crew. I stay there, long segment coming up, Gerald Salente, and, I, and I've been uh, up for more than 24 hours, so I'm a little dingy. It's trendsresearch.com and trendsjournal.com. Trendsresearch.com and trendsjournal.com, invaluable. And, the, and you get the magazine there as well. We'll be right back with Gerald Salente to get into where he sees things going now. Gerald Salente of the Trends Research Center, trendsresearch.com, publisher of the Trends Journal, uh, joins us. And I love the new cover of the, of the new journal that just came out. It's a it's a uh, you know, guy in a suit uh, with a presidential-looking tie, the dark suit with two heads, uh, and the two-headed ogre, of course, is uh, Romney and Obama. And never before have there been so little differences uh, between these two guys. Gerald, look, everything you saw coming many years ago, you know, been a best-selling author for several decades of forecasting trends. I mean, I guess, what is it, number one New York Times bestseller before? Uh, you've, you've really proven that you understand uh, where things are going because you've worked as a consultant, you've worked, I guess, as a lobbyist, you've worked in government, you've you know, been a successful author. Uh, you've done so many different things. Where do you see it going specifically now that so much of what you've broken down has now been accurate, fine-tuning or looking out into the future? Uh, more and more, it looks like the really bad scenario is where we're going instead of just the, uh, you know, nasty scenario, really bad, uh, really serious. And you've got a general decadence in a lot of people. Uh, they're still hardworking, decent uh, uh, people that aren't criminals that are holding up society. Uh, government is becoming more and more insane and unaccountable. I saw a case uh, yesterday. In fact, guys, I printed it. Will you just type in um, uh, child suspended iPad? And uh, the children were suspended, a bunch of them in the class. Uh, it was in the Huffington Post and other places. Because the teacher's iPhone synced with the, with the class iPads they had and saw her breath that she'd sent her boyfriend. And they said, well, you still shouldn't have seen it, even though it's our fault. She's not in trouble. You're in trouble. Or here in Austin, the, the people call 911 because their husband, you know, the, the, the father's having a seizure. And cops get there first because they send a fire truck and, you know, all this stuff now. And they get there and they go, stop having a seizure and start tasering him till he had a heart attack. Well, the guy was unconscious. And, and, and they're not getting in trouble. I mean, it, it, I, I saw an article out of England where it was like a, you know, almost 80-year-old guy who had a stroke, no criminal record, a scientist with a white cane who's blind, can barely walk, 
And the police didn't say halt, stop, anything. They just tasered him. Uh, and they said, well, that's okay. I mean, it's a bunch of sadist and crazy people in charge now. They're pushing out any good people, and it's just getting crazier and crazier uh, by the minute. And, and, and I just don't see where it's going to go from this point. I've seen other civilizations go through decadent cycles. They're nothing like this. This technology is going to allow fraud to go so much further. I'm not against technology, but it does have that manifestation that, I, I mean, I... I I just can't believe everything that we've basically broken down is so accurate and that if there's any criticism of you or I and other experts we have on, because I have people on that are accurate and piercing and, and, and you know, have records of being accurate, not, you know, not establishment liars, uh, and it, but still it's sick to be right. So, I mean, you get the gist of what I'm saying. It's, it's just a marvel at what we're witnessing. No, we've never seen anything like it. And again, you know, I'm talking about, I call it the presidential reality show. What American could be proud to be an American after watching these debates? This is it? An empty suit and a stuffed shirt? An emperor with no clothes and a, uh, a, a, a vulture capitalist that craves power? Listen to what Eisenhower said, that any man that seeks the presidency is either an egomaniac or crazy. You don't seek this. You, 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 they, you like a, a, a George Washington. You don't. They, they, they want you. You don't go seek it. Romney's been running forever. Is Obama really playing president? I mean, this cat's out there with his sleeves rolled up every damn day doing a campaign gig. You and I know. I mean, we're running businesses. You can't do this. Who the hell's running your show? You got a whole country to run, and this guy's on the campaign trail. It's so serious, but people refuse to see it for what it is. As I mentioned, when you looked at that debate, that so-called debate the other night, and look at all of the coverage, all it was about, you know, Obama came out swinging. It was, you know, it was bitter from the beginning and biting and blah, 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 blah. But how about the policies? What did they talk about? What did they say that they were going to do? And there's not a dime's worth of difference. I can make a point to prove it. Romney comes out and says, more clean coal. Oh, clean coal, great. That's like being almost pregnant, isn't it? I got enough, more fracking. More, and Obama hasn't opened up enough public lands. I'm going to open it up for more fracking. Oh, and more opening up of those pristine areas for drilling and get that pipeline running down there from the tar sands through Canada. What does Obama do? He one-ups him. He kills out Romney for closing down a coal-burning plant when he was governor of Massachusetts. So this is what we have. When it comes to more war, each one talks tougher than the other. So when you're saying where is the nation going, it's right in front of us. It's going down the crapper by two little boys that try to play tough out there on the stage that couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag. And this fat mouth Romney, I've had it with him, talking about bombing this country, bombing that country, while Romney spent two years running away from the draft in Vietnam, missionary Mitt in France. Imagine being a Mormon missionary in wine-drinking, cigarette-smoking, caffeine-addicted, Bridget Bardot-loving France. No wonder why he got punched out when he was over there. And he did. So here's a draft dodger and telling us what we should do. And by the way, here's my, oh, and Obama. I love when Obama goes into commander and chief mode. Twice he reminded us, I got Osama bin Laden. And by the way, who is this guy, Al-Qaeda? I thought Al-Qaeda was dead after they got Osama. Well, I'll tell you where so, Al-Qaeda is. They're putting him into Syria and Libya, and, and that's my question. Romney saying, hey, we're going to get you, Russia. Our troops are in a proxy war in Syria. That's now admitted. Fighting with Al-Qaeda, even the New York Times, months after it was out, admitted it you know, this Monday. So now it's true, kind of like when Sticklitz says it's a depression. Well, now, oh my gosh, it's true because they say so. 
you know, because they control reality. Uh, but I mean, the, the craziness of our troops fighting by Al Qaeda in Syria, and then Hillary says, we've got to go into Syria, they're Al Qaeda, and we got to go into Iran, they're Al Qaeda, knowing Iran is Shiite, arch enemies of Al Qaeda. I'm not defending Iran. They just t they talk to us because they know, Gerald, the general public doesn't know how to find their butt with both hands. You got it. You got it. And that's what they do. So where is it going? Oh, this is the other thing where I have a real beef. They're spending this, this baloney, nothing, moronic presidential reality show. They're spending $2.5 billion, billion with a B, in advertising. You know where the advertising's going? That's, that's to pay the prostitutes. You pay the prostitutes to do your dirty work. So here we have the prostitutes, whether it's the Guy Lear or Candy Crowley or the last one. Where do they come up with, I got the questions, and I decide what I'm going to ask. Hey, how about the rest of us? What do you mean? Hey, don't talk it's bad about Aleister Crowley. He's got a lot of followers. What? I call her Aleister Crowley. No, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Here they are, Alex. The networks are running the campaigns. Let's get this straight. They're getting all the money to run the ads. All the debates are being run by the networks. They used to be the debates. Most people are too young to remember. They used to be run by the League of Women Voters. That's right. Before the Democratic and Republic, uh, Republican Mafia took it over. This is just a stage two-bit show. They're delivering nothing. Nothing of substance comes out of these. Again, it's the same campaign rhetoric. So where's it going? I mentioned the rise in crime. It's up 18%. Violent crime is up 18%. How about the new housing numbers that came out today? Whoop, they're down almost 2%. You look at the unemployment numbers that you keep mentioning and just mentioned. Oh, they readjusted them. They went back up again. You're looking what about 388,000 people a week, a week going on unemployment. You look at one issue after the other, there is no recovery, it's a cover-up. So now let's see what else is going on. Oh, isn't it great? They have China and Japan fighting each other. Hey, sound familiar? Couldn't be because the United States is opening up bases over there in Australia. They've announced that they're, after being defeated in Afghanistan and Iraq, destabilizing the Middle East. Hey, let's take on China. They got thousands of nukes and a billion, 300 million people. Let's start a fight with them. Exactly. We failed over there. Let's fail real big. Let's get Japan, our little proxy puppet over there, and have them steal a two-bit island, say that they paid for it so they could start clashing between each other. And boy, this thing's coming down big. The Chinese aren't letting it go away. And think of the stupidity of the psychopaths. China is one of Japan's biggest markets. Now the people in China aren't buying Japanese stuff. And remember what I said, and you see it happening. The crash of 29, the panic of 08, same. The panic's followed by depression. We're in a depression. Oh, even Stiglitz says it now. Currency wars. Listen to the head of the financial, head of the Brazilian government, the finance minister, Montega. We're in a currency war. The United States, Europe, China, they're all devaluing their currencies. China just lowered interest rates twice in the last week and a half. They're flooding money into the system to prop it up. Currency wars, same thing. Panic of 08, crash of 29. Depression, currency wars, trade wars. You hear mittens and you hear Obama bashing China. The trade wars are heating up. World war. How many more pieces have to be put together? We talked about what's going on in Spain, what's going on in Greece, what's going on in Portugal. Millions of people are taking to the streets in desperation. They have nothing. They have nothing. 
Oh, and this banking deal that was just done in Brussels, you know what the European stability mechanism means in outside of white shoe boy language. It's very simple. We're going to tax you more. We're going to cut your pensions, your benefits. We're going to raise your retirement age till after you die. We're going to take every penny that you have. We're going to buy worthless bonds with the money. Oh, and we're going to deposit it directly into the accounts of the bankers. And we're going to pay them interest for the money they lost in between. Yeah, so we bail, I mean, explain that slowly, though. We bail out the mega banks. The media tells us we're lazy and that, and that we're in debt. Ninety plus percent of the money goes directly to the bankers who then bail us out, but then the money goes back to them because we bailed them out. It's fraud within fraud within fraud. It makes Bernie Madoff look like uh, a, 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 a saint and the general public doesn't care because they think Al Qaeda is hiding in their underwear. Yeah, exactly. And then when you and then keep p piling on to that one. And then we heard the Grand Madame Christine Lagarde, the head of the IMF. You're not working hard enough, you scumbag uh, people in Greece. You're, enough of your kids aren't starving to death. Your tourism hasn't imploded enough. Give me more money. You need to work six, seven days a week. And pay your taxes as she doesn't pay a penny in taxes. Oh, because the EU wrote the rules where the bureaucrats don't pay taxes. Exactly. Just like just like the big banks don't pay taxes. Oh. oh! You used the word, by the way, also in the debate, the issues that they talked about, none of the major issues. And, and you just used the word so now I could say it. What they talked about in that last debate, so much about gun control. People have no jobs. They're losing their homes. Elderly people can't pay their property taxes, school taxes. They're throwing them out of their houses. They're taking them. Kids are going to college. 50% of them are getting out and they're taking, they get to jobs, have jobs that are paying high school level wages. These are facts. And we know what they're talking about, gun control. Let's, let's talk about 20 minutes on gun control and contraception. And I realized why Obama and Romney spoke so much about contraception. Because the word you just used. Both of them are scumbags. That's what they talk about. None of the big issues. So, as we're looking around the world and what's going on, we're at war. There's a war in Yemen, a war in Bahrain. Syria, they've destroyed Syria. And who's destroying it? The United States and the Arab Little League. And by the way, IMF is International Mafia Federation. That's what it is. They take your money. They're the loan sharks of last resort. Then you have, as I mentioned, all the other wars going on. They're taking us to war. You keep talking about it over and over again, how they grope us, how they surveil us, how they demean us, how they keep pushing us down so we have no dignity, courage, respect, or integrity left and bow to their wishes. That's what's going on. It's in front of everyone's eyes, but no one wants to call a spade a spade. And it's building towards a crescendo now. I mean, they're rolling out the troops on the streets, the TSA, and the forced inoculations of kids. That's totally illegal. All over the country, they're just shooting kids out of public schools. I mean, government has put out the green light. They're not going to get in trouble for Fast and Furious. They've just put the green light out. Hey, it's time to just go crazy. Yeah, and oh, you just, nobody gets, you haven't seen any heads roll on Wall Street. I love it. They're all talking about, you know, what has to be done on what They have a free hand. Oh, and by the way, one of the reasons that's given why John the Slime Corzine was never even brought in for questioning, besides him being a bundler for Obama, besides him being the former CEO of the Goldman Sachs gang, besides him being the senator and governor of New Jersey, the same law firm that represents MF Global is the white collar law syndicate, one of the top ones in the country. And you know who used to work there? It's such a surprise. Eric Holder, our attorney general. Oh. Yeah. Couldn't be. No. How dare you insinuate that? He's a good man. Yeah, and just because they're doing business with MF Global, and that's the law firm that he came from. The whole thing is one club. It's not a revolving door. It's one door. It's the banking door. Hey, you know that cover that we had on the Trends Journal that got so much popularity, that wonderful Anthony Frieda cover. 
Yes, we'll uh, punch it out. Christ, whipping the money changes out of the temple. Think about it, Alex. This has been going on as old as civilization. The money changes are in charge. I just did a show out of New, uh, Australia, ABC Australia, and when I went on, the host played a, sh a song. I never heard this song. It was a Woody Guthrie song. And it was a Woody Guthrie song about the money changers. Hey, tell us the name. We'll pull it up on YouTube. I, I don't know. He just played the song. See if they could find it. A Woody, Woody Guthrie, Guthrie on Bankers. We'll yeah. be right back with Gerald Salente. We'll see if we can find that. InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. Be part of history. Uh, Gerald, is that the uh, song you're talking about? Jolly Banker? Christ, what is it? Christ for President is the song. That's the name of the song, Christ for President. Christ for President. Well, we'll find that one. Yeah, this is uh, Woody Guthrie, a jolly banker, but we'll find uh, Christ for President and play that later. Uh, getting back in this little short segment, the one segment we have left after that, you got to go at five after, and then we've got Michael Bagnerick coming up. It's part of the 48-hour transmission. I'm a little bit dingy uh, here, uh, but... Uh, we are, of course, blasting out right now on the AM and FM dial. Don't forget, we're doing a fundraiser to get the satellite uplinks and buy some of the expensive TV equipment we need. We couldn't do it without you. We do this once a year. It's the fifth annual Money Bomb. We'd like to get in the position of not doing these. We do it once a year. Please donate, InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. If you think what we're doing here is important and want to contribute towards it, I know government comes and takes your money and uses it against you. We're just asking, uh, not of you, not in you know good straits. I know a lot of you aren't, but people out there that have small businesses, people that are successful, people that have been able to make it despite all the government corruption, you better belly up and vote with your dollars, folks, because there's nowhere else that gets this much information out. The type of guests we have on, like Gerald Salente and others, so InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. Uh, Gerald, uh, continuing here. I mean, there's so much to talk about. Uh, what's your take on the Iran thing? I mean, how fast that could happen? I guess they want to get Syria out of the way and get Al Qaeda in charge there and then i guess in a year after that they'll be bombing syria again to get rid of the al-qaeda they put in that's already started uh, in libya i mean where do you see this military madness going well it's again it's world war three will they attack iran i i don't know you know who knows just but as i say if they do our lives won't be worth anything anymore because you know how they say alex that <clears throat> generals always fight the last war yes they're doing it again they're fighting the last war and if there's a war against Iran, these are the Persians. There's 70 million of them, very intelligent people. This isn't Iraq with 26 million people in a very different country. This is a very sophisticated society. You're going to see what, you know, when I wrote Trends 2000 back in 1996, I wrote about all the weapons of mass destruction, all the suitcase-sized nukes that were being sold on the black market when the Soviet Union fell apart. They're still out there. And they're more sophisticated. So the next war is going to go, you know, boom goes London, boom Paris. You're going to see suitcase-sized nukes blowing off. You're going to see dirty bombs. You're going to see weapons of mass destruction, biological warfare. It's going to be uncontrollable. And, of course, they'll come out with the lines, we're going to be able to fix it. Like our commander-in-chief just said, on the comedy show the other night about how they're going to fix the problem when four Americans get killed. Hey, how about all the other Americans are getting killed? Oh, that's all right. They're only soldiers. They don't care. They're not ambassadors. That's the other thing, by the way, it really gets me. An ambassador gets killed. Not on. Oh, my God, the ambassador. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, it's so horrible. One of the one of the bureaucratic, you know, succubus corps. Stay there. Back in 60 seconds with Gerald Salente. It's our final segment with the one, the only, Gerald Salente, TrendsResearch.com, uh, former Libertarian presidential nominee and candidate, Michael Bagnerick, talk about the state of the world's coming up. They'll be joining us. We'll open the phones up uh, as well with Mr. Bagnerick on a host of issues. Uh, Gerald, if you were on you know, national TV, which isn't what it used to be, the, the ratings have dropped, but let's say you were talking to you know, millions of people, which you are, uh, but 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 folks that weren't informed, what would you say in the five minutes we have left? What would you say to them about you know changing the direction we're going or where it's going if we don't change it? Right. I, I, I will say that, but I just want to finish that thought I had to say about the big deal when the ambassador gets killed. Sure. 
You know, when, when Sergeant Rodriguez gets blown up and gets killed by a roadside bomb in Afghanistan, when, when Tammy White gets her brains blown out by a sniper in Afghanistan, when, when, when somebody else, you know, uh, uh, Michael Smith, the lieutenant, he gets killed by a, a, a rocket-propelled grenade, the president, the secretary of state, Nobody shows up. They don't even show the coffins on TV. But when the ambassador gets killed, boy, oh boy, the whole crew comes out. The world stops. The embassies are all... But when we, anything happens to us, it doesn't matter. And I'm saying that because it leads into your next question. What could change it? The whole system is built upon making them look better than you or me. And what I say to everyone right now, that the only way that the change is going to come is when you make the change. It has to start with the individual. We all have, we all have unique gifts. You have yours, they're a parent. And everybody has to rise up to keep making your unique gift greater and greater. I have a friend of mine, Sonny Rollins, the great jazz saxophonist. He's in his 80s. He gave me a quote from one of my books, What Zizzy Gave Honey Boy. He practices every day. He practices every day getting better at his trade. You don't hope for things to happen. I say this because we're in this campaign cycle that's ending. We're going to be left with a choice of a lesser of two evils. And I'm saying I don't go out with evils. I don't deal with evils. I don't do business with evils. I don't hang out with evils. Why would I vote for an evil to run my life or run my country? So I'm saying that because people don't have the the belief that they are as least good as their leaders. So I suggest this. If Clinton can, if Bush can, if Obama can, and Romney can, <coughs> then you can, and I can. Unless, of course, you think that their mother's better than yours. Just so speaking for myself, they're not superior to me. They're red carpets, all uh, saluting. I salute. I got one for you. Save it. You're not better than me, and your mother's not better than mine. Let's just call it equal so this doesn't get out of hand. So people have to find within themselves to stop buying into the baloney, raise themselves to the highest levels, because when the collective consciousness changes, Alex, to me, that's the only way it changes. No, no, I agree. It's these so-called elites that are dragging us down, and they know it. They're just willing to do horrible things that normal, good, virtuous people aren't. They have desires that we don't have. It's, they're like cancer. Uh, like you said, they're anti-team you know, team humanity, and it's time to stop bowing down to them. It's time to get in their face and tell them they're scum and filth. I do that. In fact, my, mother, my mother's a lot better than them. I don't come from inbred parasites that suck <laughs> off people. My mother's better than theirs. Well, I was just trying to, just trying to keep it equal. You know, that's what I mean. Yeah, of course. What do you think their mother could cook like No, I mean, these globalists like come from a bunch of you know, murdering <laughs> inbred scum, most of them. Their mothers were pigs. Yeah. All right. Uh, hey, Gerald Salente, you're awesome. Trends Journal. Tr uh, everybody can find out more right there at trendsresearch.com. Thank you, my friend, for all the hey, time. Thank you. Keep it up, Alex. Thanks you, a lot. Thank you so much. We'll be back. We have been going for 25 hours straight right now, and uh, we're going to go for another 23 hours until 11 a.m. tomorrow. In fact, I have a sneaking suspicion we, we may just keep going <laughs> by then. Uh, we have had an incredible lineup. Let me tell you who's been on. Congressman Walter Jones, Greg Pallas, Sean Stone, John Rappaport, Mike Adams, Webster Tarpley, George Norrie, James Wesley Rawls, Linda West, Shikari Jackson, and all the guests they had on. Uh, uh, Russell Dowden, Dan Badandi, Syrian Girl, Rob Dude, David Icke, Gerald Salente just left us. Now Michael Bagneric's coming on, Max Kaiser, Joseph Farah, Amber Lyon, the CNN uh, whistleblower, Larry Pinckney, John B. Wells, Darren McBrain, Richard Reeves, David Knight, Lord Christopher Monkton, Joel Scals, and so many others. David Ortiz, you name it here on the uh, transmission and I I don't know I did like 12 hours yesterday and I'm doing uh, not, not quite as many today but then I'm back tomorrow 
uh, to uh, end uh, the 48-hour uh, transmission. And, and, and look, I don't like getting up on air and asking for money. I don't like doing it. Um, quite frankly, if I spent more time on sales and if I spent more time, um, before we go to Michael Bagneric, if I spent more time cutting better ads and doing things, I could probably raise the capital we need to get the satellite uplinks and pay for a bunch of expensive TV equipment, even trying to get the cheap stuff. <clears throat> because we've already got the studios built. We're already reaching millions and millions and millions more people every week. Uh, I want to do free to air, but there's a couple different satellites we'd need to put the nightly news up on. Because the, you know, the mission isn't just make money. In fact, that money is fuel in the rocket. We are trying to basically just do outreach to the world you know, like the Christian missionaries do with their satellites that reach hundreds of millions, that's what we want to be able to do. Kind of like, you know, British government has channels worldwide, the Iranian, the Russian, the U.S. government. I mean, I want to do something like that, okay? I mean, you want that to, I mean money, I don't worship money. I don't worship at the altar of it. In fact, it's a, it's a hassle when it's you know, yours personally and you got to fool with it. You know, you got a car that runs, you got some money in the bank for your kids, you, you got your bills paid. Man, you're, you, you're happy. These globalists always want more, 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 more because they're like peacocks showing off to each other. But I did realize about five, six years ago, I said, man, we're the best there is. I mean, when it comes to fighting the New World Order, we're reaching two or three million people or more a week, some, some weeks more. And I was like, wow, listeners are like, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need to, you need to, you need to do a magazine. You need to do a nightly news. You need to do, and I was like, you know what? You're right. So it's taken me five years to get to this next level, 50 crew members, 51 crew members and contractors. And uh, now we're finishing up some of the new sets, which are good for different shows. We're going to have a lot of things, you know, gun shows. Uh, we're going to have, uh, you know, shows analyzing propaganda, uh, not just the nightly news. I mean, we're really building something here, but we're always busy doing all the other stuff while we're building it. <clears throat> and really having a chunk of cash. I mean, it, folks, CNN studios and stuff cost three to $5 million. Our studio... I don't know, that studio back there with all the equipment and the, and the, and the building and everything, $400,000. Our one big TV studio, and we're putting in some little sets that are thirty to $50,000 a piece in the equipment and getting the new upgrade of cameras. You know, that's a couple hundred thousand dollars to have enough for everybody to use. Uh, just so everything looks really awesome. And that's what matters nowadays. We need to get more crew to be able to not just put stuff in the high def of it, prisonplanet.tv, but as the outreach after it's first at prisonplanet.tv, put it up in high def on YouTube. It's just the time to sit there and compress it and get it up there. We don't have the crew. That's why it's in cruddy res, because we're just fast as we can blasting it out. We put it out high res and HD for everybody on the, you know, in the archive every night, but then... I'm not going to get into a whole rant about it. The point is, is that we are dedicated to this. And so I understand we're in a depression. And if I got up here and said, we absolutely have to have this money or we won't be operating, it'd be a lie. And, you know, I could raise $5 million like that. It was, I mean, it was when my show was a fraction of its audience five years ago that it is now that Ron Paul came on and not being prompted said half the donations we get in this campaign are from your listeners. I mean, that's a big deal. Uh, well, I'm, I'm telling you, Ron Paul was there as an educational thing, even if he didn't have a very good chance of winning. People now know about the Federal Reserve and the New World Order. It's mainlined it so we can then go to the next level. You know, now they're passing legislation in the House to audit the Fed. Fifteen years ago, Ron Paul couldn't get one co-sponsor. So it's a process. You know, this war is a series of little battles and big battles and in-between battles. And you're all out there. More powerful than you know. So what can you do? Spread the word about the show on your local AM and FM stations you're listening to. Sponsor the show if you're a local business. You know, support the First Amendment. Support people that will expose the real corruption and who don't play games to become trailblazers. I've already seen my show. This has been admitted in major trade publications like Talkers and Radio Inc. and others, that, that the Alex Jones show is the mark in trailblazing alternative media and is at the very center of the internet revolution. Just because I was always trying to find any way I could to reach people and get to them. So we were always trying everything new. Um, and so that's why we've been trailblazers. We, we, you know, they say necessity is the mother of invention. I'm no genius. I'm just somebody that knows I don't want to be a slave and works hard and you figure it out by trial and error. We still got a lot to figure out, okay? But, but you can see we're growing fast because we're putting everything we can, our backup money, everything, into really trying to give a full resistance to the globalist. I mean, not do half measures, not wish later we would have done more. So, 
I'm going to tell you what I told you the last four years with these money bombs. This is the fifth year. Do not give me money if you are in debt or have bill problems. I'm like one of these preachers. If you're a local business, you sponsor our local AM and FM affiliates because they're awesome. And they're putting us on prime time and we're getting great ratings for them, but they need the sponsorship as well. Uh, spread the word about the show. Uh, get a PrisonPlanet.tv membership to watch the show, not just hear it. Uh, sign up and get the magazines. That's that. Those are about pamphlets, though. These are at cost. You can buy them in bulk. This is about people really appreciate them. You know, Glossy Magazine. They're now in Glossy with all the key info every month to them. That's at InfoWarsStore.com. Buy the Pro Pure water filters. Already discounted ten percent. Nobody's got them at that price. And, and the profit we make off that is good to fund things. InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, and but if you're a business owner. Uh, and you don't like these wars, and you don't like torture, and you don't like the corruption, let me tell you, you there's no bigger bang for the buck than giving money straight up to InfoWars.com. You know, I give money to Salvation Army, to Meals on Wheels, things I know are good charities, where over 90% of the money actually goes to the people. I, I, I give some money, not a lot. Uh, I mean, compared to what rich people would give, I, I give I give money to groups that buy you know hospital beds and things for for kids. And I, I I do intend you know I'm trying to take you know instead of keeping profit for myself, which I do need to protect myself and be strong, I'm just kind of all in. Well, you know what? I'll just I'll just put it all in to this. And then sometimes I have to control myself to not you know give the money I've got a little bit of money to straight up charity. But I go out and do research about what the real charities are. My point is, this is not a charity. This is, hey, you want to help us get bigger guns in the InfoWar? Then go give right now at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. I mean, really, we need people that are business owners and are successful and who've got, you know, just piles of money in the bank. And I know that uh, we know our demographics. We have incredibly wealthy people listening, a lot of nouveau riche, a lot of upper middle class, uh, you know, who, who'll go spend $10,000 on a set of golf clubs or $100,000 on some car, and you got eight of them out in the garage. You know, the point is, you need to donate to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. The, the, the received knowledge, the received thing is, keep your head down. Don't be involved in anything. Just take care of yourself, and you'll be fine. Look, that's what's gotten us to this point. That's why I've thrown caution to the wind being threatened and all the stuff that I've been through, because I realize there's no future if we don't stop these globalists. So again, I haven't really done the pitch yet, because uh, I hate asking for money, but I mean, that's it, folks, and it's truth. You need to donate right now at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. We're almost up to $200,000. Uh, 500000 is what we really need. It'd be great to get a million in. I know we have upwards of 3 million listeners a day on XM and over 130 affiliates. And uh, again, we're not NPR where they take government money, but also beg for money every day. Once a year for five years, we've done this. Uh, and uh, here we are, we're doing it. And if you want to just really help us expand we're not really going to expand much more. It's more electronic. Get in fact next year. I don't intend to grow anymore. This is this is enough. Uh, then we may not even do a money bomb next year. Uh, but the point is is that fifth annual money bomb. Uh, you can get T-shirts. You name it. There's also some eBay auctions. It's all there. Infowarsmoneybomb.com or 888-253-3139. We got Max Kaiser coming up in the next hour. Uh, a lot of other really big guests. Let's go to Michael Bagnerick, the presidential. Uh, a candidate, or what was it, back in 2004, former Austinite, friend of mine, been out to dinner many times, on Access TV going back 16 years ago, 17 years ago, really, you know, getting politically involved at the same time. Well, he'd been involved before that, but in Austin. We're about to go to break, my friend. It's it's great to have you on. In fact, I had your bio info. I want to be sure and plug your uh, plug your website as well here because that's important in the Constitution classes and your new book that's coming out and all you're doing. But just, we're going to break here, but in two minutes, the state of the world, I mean, how crazy uh, does it have to get before we really wake up? Oh, I wish I knew the answer to that question. It is going over the edge. Um, everybody realizes that there are economic problems. Uh, the price of gasoline is going up. The price of food is going up. And what really is happening is the value of our money is going down. And the United States is in good shape compared to other countries in the world. So if people think they're hurting now, they just have to wait a couple more months and the, the real pain is going to start. I, I heard you last week on, um, I think it was Rule of Law Radio, and, and, you, and you were pointing out, and I want to come back with this and then whatever you want to get into, it's such an honor to have you. Michael, I heard you talking about, hey, just because they pass a law doesn't mean you have to follow it. 
And, and, and that's in the Constitution, that's in the Bill of Rights, that's in jurisprudence, that's in Magna Carta. I mean, if the government says you got to give us your daughters, you know, to have sex with, and they used to have that in Europe, you, 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 you could say no. If they announce black people are slaves tomorrow and try to pass that law, which wouldn't happen, the point is you could say no. I mean, if they say I've got to go work in a slave pit because they say so, no, I have a right to fight back. And I want to talk about that because I'm not somebody that runs around calling for violence and stuff, but defensively, you know, there's coming a time where the tyrants can only push so far. Uh, and uh, we'll be right back with Michael Bagnarek for the balance of the hour. Uh, and uh, we'll break down where he sees the world going and we'll take some calls. And Max Kaiser's coming up for two hours. We'll take calls pretty much the whole time he's on with us. So your calls are coming up. Stay with us. We are back live, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting a little dingy because I got about three hours sleep last night. I went and did Coast to Coast AM and then came back early this morning. And we had crew overnight doing a fabulous job. Uh, some of the reporters and, and, and people in here. All right, Michael McNerick, I'm going to shut up. Let's repeat the point you made in the Constitution, Bill of Rights, jurisprudence, about the fact they just keep passing all these laws. Or, or there's not, They don't even have a law that the TSA can do what they do. They just do it. They're not even sworn officers. A sworn officer couldn't do that. What do you call this lawlessness of government that's just going rampantly wild right now? And why do you think they're doing this? I mean, is it just that, that, that they've learned they can get away with it? So they are? I mean, we see history repeating itself. Uh, get into that precept, though, the fact that, uh, you know, they can announce we're all slaves tomorrow. It doesn't mean it's really the law. Yes, that's true. And, and the phrase that I say is that if Congress passed a law that I was a seven-foot-tall purple rabbit... <laughs> That doesn't make it true. I'm not seven foot tall, I'm not purple, and I'm not a rabbit. But if they declare seven foot tall purple rabbit hunting season, I might be in a little bit of trouble if they have my name on the list. The, but you are correct. It's mostly because Americans go along with it. The, um, the problem is that we are so uh, taught to conform to society and submit to authority that we don't even question it. Um, if either you or I went out and we asked a young lady to raise her arms up so we could take a naked photo of her, I mean, we'd be slapped with a harassment suit. But that happens every day, every moment at the airports in the country. You know, they just, and people just file through the, the body scan machine. You know, they're going to visit grandma. They really pay no attention to what is happening. And I used to think, I used to think that survival, self-preservation was built in, was a DNA encoded, um, you know, response. But I was talking to somebody and in the process of doing this discussion, I asked him what he would do if he was walking down the sidewalk and somebody started to choke him. And he said, well, I'd poke him in the eye, step on his foot, you know, the, some form of you know, violence to stop the attack. And I said, well, what would happen or what would you do if the person choking you was in a uniform and had a badge? What if it was a policeman choking you? And I'm not kidding. They said they would have to stand there and let it happen because you're not allowed to resist the police. And I was speechless, which, as you know, doesn't happen very often for me. Um, there are people genuinely who walk around with the idea in their head that if an authority figure tells them to do something, they are obligated to do it. And we need to change that philosophy in the United States. That's the core. Uh, yeah, it's totally un-American, but we've been taught being American and being free means you wear giant chains and literally kiss the rear end of any bureaucrat immediately. I mean, that can be the new salute in America. It's not just the TSA grabbing our genitals, but we can run like a dog and just shove our nose into the butt crack of the nearest bureaucrat and then worship them, and then they would taser us and beat our brains out and roll around in our blood, and that could be the new American handshake. And I... In continuing that discussion, just because something is a law doesn't make it legitimate. Uh, Adolf Hitler never did anything against law. He just passed a law that said that it was okay to do the things that he did. And in the United States, we all you know, prefer to think of ourselves as good law-abiding citizens. But at what cost? I mean, how far do we go you know, to listen to authority in the 1933 
agree, Franklin Delano Roosevelt said that it was now illegal for people to own gold and that everybody was supposed to turn their gold in to, you know, Washington, D.C. And, I mean, it's surprising that a president of the United States who take an oath of office would get on a balcony and say that. What is even more stunning is that American citizens would actually turn in their gold. Now, I know that there were some that did not, but we have 23,000 gun laws in this country, all of which are unconstitutional. As you well know, they're getting ready to pass the... Uh, yeah, let's talk about that when we come back. And it also sounds like you're at Cape Canaveral sometimes, like your rocket's launching. But I kind of like it. What do they have, like 18 monkeys with pots and pans in the background beating them on their heads? All right, folks, I'm sorry. When I haven't had sleep, look out. You start seeing the real Alex Jones. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with us. And yes, I'm crazed. Crazed for liberty. What we're seeing... It's a revolution of tyrants and control freaks shelling us on the fact that we should bow down. Michael Bagnerick uh, is uh, at a hotel right now, I guess, in a commons area. That's why I think they were mo doing moving some furniture or something. Or uh, they were, uh, it was a uh, high school band practicing with drum sets or something. But uh, he's with us. Amazing information. If you haven't been to one of his Constitution courses, because I've watched them online, but also seen him give speeches, it's, tr it's truly powerful. You can go find out about those at constitutionpreservation.org, constitutionpreservation.org, former presidential and nominee and candidate for the Libertarian Party, 2004, good friend of mine going back about 16 years, Michael Badnerick. Uh, Michael, look, where is it going? I mean, I mean, here's an example out of the Huffington Post, Associated Press, and The Sun, and the teachers, this came out yesterday, it happened two days ago, the, the iPad... Uh, that the class was using, her phone synced with it because she'd been loading stuff on it and it was her sending pictures of her breast to her boyfriend. And they said, doesn't matter, zero tolerance, you saw it, so you're ex suspended. And the point is, I see this more and more where things are just totally nonsensical on purpose. She's not in trouble, you're in trouble. And they say, yes, you were doing your 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 uh, uh, you know group learning on these iPads because it's like groups of four with each one. Yes, it synced and went on there because she was putting stuff off her phone on that. But you're in trouble, and I see this more and more where you know they'll taser someone having a seizure and, and then say, well, they deserved it. He didn't follow orders, but he was having a seizure. He was unconscious. Well, he's bad. We're arrested. You know, I mean, more and more, it's like government. It seems nonsensical, but they know what they're doing. They're just bringing an unreality. Uh, to things now where they're always good and you're always bad. To be a citizen is to be a slave, is to be trash, is to be scum. To be government is to be God. Uh, and to be a, a global corporatist, you know, who controls the government is is is, is to be God. I want to get into your new book that's coming out. I can't wait to read it. Tell us about that. But uh, where do you see all this going, Michael Bagnerick? The economy in the United States and indeed the entire world is going to crash. People who don't have a year year to a year and a half supply of food, uh, the people who have not converted their paper money into um, silver and gold are literally not going to survive. This is like the most dreadful game of musical chairs. And Speaking of musical chairs, what's going on where you're at? I'm, I'm sorry, Alex. I, I've given interviews in this uh, lobby before, but today they've decided to mop and clean and the maid is uh, moving the chairs around. Um, Why don't we just give them some like some lightsabers? They can have a battle in there. That's what it sounds like. It, yeah. It's like Darth Vader. I find your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> impressive, most impressive. Autobots roll out. Autobots roll out. I am Optimus Prime, the Cube, and right, I'm starting to get into the mode now. Now that made him stop. That, that made him stop. Yeah. Tell him in the name of Darth Vader, cease and desist immediately. So, uh, so how much Red Bull have you had over the last two days? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I yes, yeah, I think you've hit on it. I've had too much. Uh, I've had too much uh, pollen burst and a root of my coffee, brother. Yeah, I did the same thing when I was driving the U-Haul down from Indiana to Texas, drinking coffee and Red Bull. My eyes were about it half an inch wider than they usually are. Autobots roll out. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the 
pro this problem is very serious. Um, and it's made more serious by the fact that people are in denial or completely unaware of the problem. Um, I tell people the economy is going to crash and people are going to starve to death. And they just kind of nod their head. They figure Michael is just being, you know, using hyperbole again. I went to a presentation by Peter Schiff. He was uh, talking about the, the future economy and selling his new book, um, The Real Crash. And he put it into such detail that even the people who went to see him, who undoubtedly are aware of the problem, at least a little bit, I mean, the audience was going, oh, my God. I mean, we couldn't believe how black of a picture he was painting. And by the way, that's what all the numbers show. Even Sticklet says it's a global depression. Now, break down what he was saying there. Uh, and Because it's this learned helplessness. It's this... Uh, it's. It's this normalcy bias where you can tell people now, hey, they got a proxy war with the Russians in Syria and the Russians are threatening to start nuking Europe. People are like, oh, what's a Russian? God, I hope they nuke, man. But, you know, if their neighbor's dog goes to the bathroom in their yard, they're ready to kill them. But if government's violating them or robbing them, it's like it's almost cool to be run over and be a slave. Right. Well, uh, I can't remember all the details, but basically Peter was saying that as bad as things are in the United States, it is much worse over in Europe. Um, he said that Greece and Spain and uh, Italy are basically falling apart. And it's based on loaning money. You borrow money, you can't pay the money back, so you borrow more money to pay that back. And then you borrow more money again. And what the people loaning money do is they reduce the interest rate to make it easier for you to borrow is that you're not in trouble when the interest rate is low, but when that interest rate goes back up, you are screwed. And he said that's exactly what has happened in all these European countries. Right now, he said the uh, interest rate in the United States is practically zero. And he says that people are still buying U.S. Treasury bonds, not because U.S. Treasury bonds are so good, but by comparison to Europe, they are not as bad. And he says, as soon as the banks start to raise the interest rates in the United States, things are going to go to hell in a handbasket. Yeah, that's when the inflation, the real inflation is going to start. And then it's going to be Autobots roll out. Can, can you do an Optimus Prime in, uh, uh, impersonation, Michael? <laughs> no, I can't. I really don't. How about Starscream? Can you do that? I don't even know what Starscream is. Megatron, I am the leader. <laughs> I like to do Clint Eastwood. Go ahead, make my day. You know? Go ahead, punk, make my day. I can do Bill Clinton. I did not have sex with that woman, Monica Lewinsky. How dare you? Hey, 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 seriously, I'm, I'm being a bit dingy, and, and then there was all the banging in the background, which, which sounded like a Cape Canaveral launch, but but I, I apologize, Michael, I am in kind of a giddy mood here, I think, from too much caffeine and being totally exhausted uh, here in the 48-hour transmission money bomb. What is your prognosis? I mean, look, you got Americans buying guns, three, four, five million a month. They say they don't trust the government. You've got a huge group of people, probably 100 million, that really know we're in deep trouble. You've got another hundred million that don't know which planet they're on, and another hundred million that just want to party and have a good time. I mean, that's an oversimplification or bureaucrats. And what's going to happen when things really start accelerating in the collapse that now more and more is a foregone conclusion? Government's digging in the 1.6 billion bullets. Uh, what do you expect to happen? I, I think we've got a good chance because of your work. Ron Paul, our listeners, myself, uh, and Optimus Prime and many others, I believe that we have a good chance, being serious here, uh, to, you know, to actually say, hey, see, big government and tyranny and insider good old boy deals, it screwed things up, let's go back to the republic. But I think now is the prime battle. I, I agree. I agree. There are a lot of people that you and I have spoken to over the years that get it. They are stocking up on food. They are ready to go. And I've had people tell me privately that, I mean, they are locked and loaded and just waiting to see what's going to happen next. The people who are kind of on the fence, they don't believe that it's going to happen or they don't believe that it's as bad as you and I tell them, 
when it starts to happen, they are going to come to Jesus very quickly. They are going to be knocking on our door. You and I are going to be getting phone calls about, oh, my gosh, what do we do? So we're going to have a majority of those people on our side. The people who are concerned that the government to the army has all the guns, you can't fight against a tank or a, an F-16, you've got to remember that the people that are operating those war machines are on our side. I mean, they, they cannot be vocal. Uh, they can't get up and, um, well, they do occasionally. We had the one Marine who posted on Facebook and immediately they dragged him off to an insane asylum because he was crazy for, you know, challenging the government. The military is on our side. We are going to restore liberty. It's not going to be pretty in some cases. There's going to be a lot of a shortage of food, a shortage of electricity, um, and people are going to have to learn how to kind of camp out wherever they're living. But there's also going to be a little bit of bloodshed. The people who are unprepared, they're going to be going door to door looking for your last jar of peanut butter. And you don't need to have a gun so much to protect yourself against the IRS and the ATF. You need to have the gun to protect yourself against the, the neighbor who's, who's going to try to take your food. It's going to be like the um, L.A. riots after the Rodney King verdict. It's going to be like that pretty much wall-to-wall, coast-to-coast. And, and by the way, government insiders, I mean, they've got the former Solicitor General, uh, excuse me, Comptroller. I mean, they're all coming out saying the same thing. And government for the, is really digging in against us. Uh, and uh, But the ADL and Southern Poverty Law Center say we're extremists, Michael, if we talk about it. Well, yeah, I'm extremist. I'm not going to let anybody take my stuff or hurt me. You know, I'm willing to defend myself if that makes me an extremist. I well, find I your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> but there are um, organizations who are working to establish a proper Republican form of government so that when the existing government crumbles, that there will be another one ready to take its place, one that goes back to the fundamentals of the Founding Fathers documented in all of our uh, our Constitution, Declaration of Independence, the, the United States that everybody thinks they live in. So there are a lot of people being prepared, and it's kind of that that quiet before the storm. There's that little tension in the air. Don't act so surprised, Your Highness. You aren't on any mercy mission this time. Several transmissions were beamed to this ship. I want to know what happened to the plans they sent you. So I've got my lightsabers already. I've got. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, uh. but I'm also trying to spread that knowledge. The the information that you and I have been trying to teach for so many years, I've recently put into a new book called The Secret to Sovereignty. And if you've had a chance to read the preface, you'll know that I say I have the answer, but you're not going to like it. And uh, I think it'll be a really important book once that gets out. Well, I agree with you here, buddy. And uh, look, it's important more than ever people to get prepared, but also support venues and outlets. And that's what this show is all about. People supporting and getting your incredible work and getting it out to others at constitutionpreservation.org. People supporting, uh, you know, Ron Paul in the past, helping educate people because it's, it's a series of battles in this war. People supporting all the countless researchers and fighters for liberty we have on the show. That's why we're having donations today. 48-hour broadcast, and I've gotten a bit dingy. I'll, I'll quit having fun here, but I, my, me and Michael are old friends, so I, I don't think we ever we used to go out with the Libertarians to dinner, though. I think I never did the Darth Vader imitations there. I'm kind of reverting back to 12 years old uh, here, but uh, and I, actually, I like voiceovers. By the way, national top voiceover talent. Uh, John B. Wells is also a syndicated radio host, coasttocoastam.com. He's going to be co-hosting for a couple hours uh, coming up later in the uh, afternoon. Max Kaiser is coming up. Uh, let me give the number out for a few calls for Michael Bagneric. If you disagree with him or agree with him or disagree with me or you don't think I should be doing James Earl Jones imitations, 800-259-9231, uh, 800-259-9231. And uh, we will put you in the arena Right now, I may even talk to you in an Optimus Prime voice, uh, or uh, I may sing uh, rock and roll songs. You never know what's going to happen when I haven't got any sleep, and I've had five cups of coffee this morning so far. 
executive cups. I had one of the first cups to come out this morning, and I think that's uh, part of the problem. Uh, so, uh, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Michael Bagneric is our guest, 800-259-9231. Uh, you know, I sit here and joke around kind of gallows humor uh, because the sands of time for our republic are running low, uh, and it makes me very, very upset. I mean, I, I get mad at the globalists because I know they're dangerous, and I know we're on a collision course, and I know I'm not stopping. I'm not bowing down and, you know, kissing their wart-covered toes. Uh, so I'm just angry that they're such scum. And I'm also mad at the public because these evildoers are pretty weak and pathetic. They just get in big games. Uh, but historically, I know we're going to beat these people. And I think if we can beat them, uh, we're going to really see a true, uh, you, you know, uh, ascendancy uh, of uh, liberty and, 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 and just an absolutely new era. Uh, what do you think about that, Michael Bagneric? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it just crossed my mind that, you know, in my limited amount of time, I want all of your listeners to download The Law, written by Frederick Bastia. It's a small pamphlet. It's excellent. If it, takes, if it takes you longer than two hours to read it, you're daydreaming and doing something else. Download The Law by Frederick Bastia. That will explain the way the government is supposed to work. And it will do it in such clear, concise terms. You won't have any doubt that most of what our government does today is unconstitutional. Well said. I mean, people need to learn that our ancestors, humans only live 75 years on average. We go through the same stuff over and over again. Those of us that know history are going, oh, man, oh, we know what happens next. Oh, because once you get a tyranny, the worst get in, and then they're replaced with even more bad, and it's like a race to the most evil. And then the worst people you could imagine get in control, and then things go to hell in a handbasket. And it's because of our lack of uh, vigilance. You know, Thomas Jefferson said the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. And when I give presentations, I'll say, raise your hand if you're a good patriotic American. Everybody raises their hand. Raise your hand if you can tell me how many articles are in the Constitution. Nobody. It's like, what's your standard for good patriotic American? You can dress yourself in the morning. I think we ought to raise the standard for what a good patriotic American really is. Well, I agree with you. We're going to go to a break here in about a minute and uh, come back and take a few calls for two short segments with Michael Bagneric. Everything is settled down there at Cape Canaveral, and uh, I'm settling down as well. Um, so uh, we're going to go to break and come back. I want to thank all of you that have been donating at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com, or, or you can link through at InfoWars.com or Uh the, Anything you purchase also goes into the Money Bomb. Uh, in the next few days, and uh, I just want to thank you all for your support, but most importantly, spreading the word about the broadcast and checking out the incredible resources at constitutionpreservation.org. I mean, Michael Bagneric is one of the most eloquent and also on target and, and, and down to earth and, and not patriot mythology, real information, real facts uh, that you'll learn about the Constitution and common law there. Uh, we'll be right back. Lord knows where we'd be. When it comes to heroes, renegades are mine. People like Michael Bagnerit taking calls right now. Please spread the word about the InfoWars Money Bomb, the free video streams going out at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com after the official radio show ends in a couple hours. We will continue with live transmission on the audio streams at InfoWars.com. Uh, and this once a year transmission ends tomorrow at 11 a.m. InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. And I'm uh, getting a bit theatrical here, having some fun, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I do when I get tired. I have fun. Uh, let's go ahead. If I'm cleaning the garage yet, I have a good time doing it, you know, or, or it would be hell. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk to Travis. Ooh, an evil first name, like like Colonel Travis had a great last name, uh, William Barrett Travis. Uh, Travis from Georgia, you're on the air. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Alex. Welcome, sir. Um, it's quite a great thing you're doing here today. Are today, yesterday. Thank you. Are, You're talking. Yes, sir. Go ahead. What's uh, on your mind? Well, I was on here about a month or so ago. I got a little bit nervous, though, and um, I lost everything in my mind that I had planned out to say. Well, I, I, hey, it's fun uh, to lose your mind. Welcome to the club, huh? Anyways. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to. I've been trying to scoop it up after all these years of fluoride and television. You know, so I'm still. You have done well, Lord Vader. Well, seriously, what's your what's your question for Michael Bagneric here, my friend, my little green friend? How, how 
can we get through to people? Because 2012 has just been blown up in everybody's face on TV and the media everywhere. Nobody like wants to listen to it anymore. And now that it's getting more serious than ever, everybody's just tuning out and just not even. Well, I, you listen, I disagree with you and I appreciate your call. I, you know, I either get callers that say everybody's waking up I talk to or I get calls saying no one's waking up. And I, I found that, you know, if you're confident about stuff and you're talking to people that know how to tie their shoelaces, that everybody knows stuff's wrong and wants to do something about it. They just don't know what to do about it. I don't know where all these people are that don't want to wake up and stuff. I mean, I mean, I, I'm not trying to be mean, but I mean, is it like in a, a mortuary or something? I mean, anybody who's alive knows things are wrong. I don't think anybody denies that. Michael, have you noticed this paradox, Michael Bagneric, our guest, uh, that either people uh, that you talk to are awake and say everybody they know is awake, or you hear these people that say no one listens to me. I, I, I don't know where this is. Well, when they say no one listens to me, it's usually because they are doing the, the elevator pitch. Um, you know, they've taken 10, 15, 20 years to figure out that things are not right, the Federal Reserve is, you know, uh, evil, and they'll get in an elevator in the lobby, and between the lobby and the 10th floor, they grab somebody by the lapels, and they say, the Federal Reserve is unconstitutional, the world is going to hell in a handbasket, and people run off the elevator because, you know, this person has tried to teach them 20 years of education in 15 seconds. Uh, you have to give people time to absorb the information. Yeah, also, a lot of people know what's going on. They're just scared and, and keep their mouth shut. I mean, a lot of people are walnut brains, too. That's my name for, like, I have to call the dogs in my house walnut brains. I mean, I, I like them. They're sweet, but, you know, they, they, well, they're not humans, and they behave badly sometimes, but a lot of, my dogs are smarter than a lot of people I know. And, hey, walnut yeah. brains need to be triaged. Just move on, folks. Got the one, the only, Max Kaiser coming up, and then we'll really open the phones up and get into, oh, judge rules. The evidence shows cell phones do cause brain tumors. They knew all along. I'll be breaking that down. Michael Bagneric's our guest. You know what? You're not going to live forever. You might as well live free. But it may be more fun to live on your knees licking the boots of uh, pot-bellied globalists. I understand that. Jack in Texas and Philip and others. You're on the air with Michael Badneric of constitutionpreservation.org. Uh, got a question for him, sir. Uh, kind of a comment. I uh, I expressed this on another show, and it was met with like vitriol of like. But the thing is, I think when we wake up, the great day will be when they have the election and nobody shows up. Because I think what they do is they pit us against each other. We we throw out these labels. I'm on this side. I'm on that side. You're on this side. Yeah. And when we go to vote, I mean, it's like I'm voting for my guy. And I'm voting for my guy, but we don't realize. No, I hear you. No, 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 you're right. I mean, when when they control both uh, both the candidates, it becomes a distraction from local elections where you get eight percent turnout, fifty five percent national on average, and then it's such a big bandwagon that you you know you get sucked in, even if you know it's a dog and pony show. I hear you. That's why people should vote for uh, you know other candidates or run locally. Michael Bagneric, your comments on what he's saying? Yeah, I I agree. We. When you talk to people, they say, well, I'm African-American. I go, I can tell by looking. But, you know, I'm, my, uh, the thing that is important to me is that you are American. I don't care if you're African-American, Asian-American. The United States is supposed to be a melting pot. We're supposed to be the only country that was ever created based on ideology. So as long as you believe in the Bill of Rights and, you know, private property, um, then, you know, we are brothers and sisters. Well said, uh, sir. Anything else, uh, Jack, in extremist Texas listening on 90.1? Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody loves sunshine and fresh air. I mean, everybody, black, white, whatever. And long as we let mainstream media and the construct define us and label us, like I, 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 don't, I don't call myself African-American. I think that's so, so silly. Uh, we, 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 long as we let them define us and keep us in these little groups, it, it's useless. And as long as, it, and, and uh, you know, Alex, I've been listening to you since Waco. Wow. And I know everything you said was true. And I knew when I was in the sixth grade, I knew something wasn't right, you know. Because, you know, I was about sixth grade and during the Vietnam War, and I knew that something ain't right about this. But if you'll notice, nothing has changed. I've been through, I think, when I was, you know, old enough, Reagan was the president. 
and nothing's really changed for me, but they keep this, this wedge in between us, and they, that's just keeping control. And if you, when you report stuff out of the mainstream, like the, the birther thing or anything like uh, Obama deception, then somebody listening, you'll turn them off because they think, oh, this is some right-wing guy. I heard you say that. No. The other day. They accuse you of being a right-wing guy, no. but I know. No, exactly. I mean, well, but really, Obama deception is about how it's all controlled. It's not even really about Obama. That's the, that's the secret of the Obama deception. And so it has woken up a lot of uh, right-wingers, establishment right-wingers. I mean, I'm more aligned with what you'd call right-wing because they call it right-wing to be anti-abortion, pro-gun, pro-family. But the Republicans don't really defend that. Uh, and it, it's it, it's a scary thing. Thank you so much. Well, look, we got more calls coming up. Michael Bagnera is going to leave us. Michael, I want to get you back up soon. And the next time you're down here in Austin, buddy, in studio. Uh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because because it's awesome having you on. But I think next time we should have, you know, those little monkeys that beat the uh, that uh, beat the drum. We should have two of those behind you the entire time wound up like or, or Energizer bunnies. <laughs> You know, going boom. Hey, can we go out with the Energizer Bunny? Boom, boom, boom. Actually, it made it fun. Uh, Michael Bagnarek, uh, it is so good to see you there, my friend, uh, via the video Skype. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. Excellent. Thank you, Alex. Constitutionpreservation.org, a very evil website. Be sure and don't visit it. Homeland Security doesn't approve. Don't visit evil InfoWars Money Bomb. Oh, lovey, don't they may give him money. Ooh, I need that for taxes. I need that so I can take their property. Don't give it to Alex Jones. Give it to MSNBC. All right, we're getting Max Kaiser on right now. He's not answering to Skype. We're going to take your calls, cover the economy, so much more. Uh, a judge has ruled, and I just had it here in front of me. We'll cover it in a moment. Uh, that uh, the scientific evidence is clear uh, that uh, cell phones are causing brain cancer. Folks, 30 years ago, when they really started to, pro uh, to proliferate them, I've had the guest on, the doctors, we've gone over the studies, they knew in lab rat studies it was giving them all sorts of tumors. It basically rattles the DNA. They, there's studies for decades admitting cell phones heat the brain. I mean, just type this in, cell phones heat the brain. And here I am, I mean, I use hands-free uh, we also have these systems of phones you plug in, you know, it's like a regular phone into it. But I still forget and use the cell phone. We still let our kids have them. We still have them in our house. I know all this, but I got used to using them. The, 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 uh, the, you know, they're very useful. I can conduct all sorts of little business things I have to do and, and news things while I'm driving to and from work. I get more done actually in the 35-minute drive, 40-minute drive every day to and fro so I can just focus and go through the calls. But I'm killing myself, and, uh, you know, I try to mitigate that uh, as best I can. Yeah, go ahead and bring that in, uh, Dan. I've printed it twice, and who knows what I've done with it. Thank you. Uh, so here is that report. Uh, mobile phones can cause brain tumors, court rules. London Telegraph, a landmark court case, has ruled there is a link between using a mobile phone and brain tumors, paving the way for a flood of legal actions. Uh, and they're talking about in Europe and the U.S. as well as England just creating, like with the vaccines, a federal damage fund where tax money will be paid to people that can jump through thousands of hoops to get a paltry sum. Uh, and it says, Innocente Marlaconi, 60, an Italian businessman, fell ill after using a handset at work for up to six hours a day uh, for 12 years. Yeah, everybody around here in the office uses their cell phones to make calls. And I'm like, hey, hey, looky here. I got landlines. Landlines, and I've tried to make myself learn to use the landline. My wife's always using cell phones at home. We need to not be lazy, use the cell phone to get the numbers out of it. And it's still doing some transmitting, but only as the GPS tracks you, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll hear like a little ping here or a little ping there, but it's not the continued microwaving. And so let's all make a commitment. Stop using cell phones. And, 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 and if you're going to cook yourself, move it around, put it, you know, uh, on the dash of the car and have it wireless uh, or, you know, a cord. Uh, put it other places. You know, just be... Uh, but this is how they kill us. They they implement something. They tell you it's fine. It's a conspiracy theory 20 years ago. It's not going to hurt you. All the studies keep coming out. And then everybody's just addicted to it. And everybody's just going to kill themselves. In fact, a lot of studies show it's worse than uh, smoking cigarettes, two packs a day. Uh, Cheryl Crow says she got it, you know, brain tumor now. Well, yeah, breast tumor. Now, now, I, mean, I mean, you know, cancer's forever, folks. And uh, I know I'm an extremist and evil and, and a conspiracy theorist, but uh, it, you know it's time to really realize that the cell towers by your house, all the schools around the country that get paid money to put the cell tower right on top of it, 
I mean, let me give a little news flash. They've done studies, big ones, university studies, where the bugs and the plants don't grow as well and get sick around the cell towers. Because if, yeah, uh, all of the electromagnetic radiation, all of it is just absolutely devastating. Now, Italy's Supreme Court in Rome has blamed his phone singer as a uh, casual link between his illness and phone use, the Sun has reported. Uh, Mr. Uh, Marcoloni said of the significant for very many people, I wanted this problem to become public because many people still don't know the risk. I've talked to World War II, well, they're dead now, and I read reports about it, but I've talked to a lot of radio operators in World War II into Korea, and after that, they said, yeah, get back from them. They'd have high-powered radars, and they would set cans of food and stuff in front of them to heat it up. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and different, mi later, I was talking to one guy who was doing microwave stuff from, uh, I think it was like Libya or something in the in the 60s who was in the army, right before Gaddafi came in. Well, I don't think he was telling me the whole story. No, no, he was in Libya, then he was in uh, Ethiopia. And then they were picking up Russian chatter and doing this NSA thing. We ought to get him in here sometimes. I think he said I could tell the story. He's a local realtor friend of mine. He's friends with one of the IT guys too. I've known him for like 10 years. It's a side issue. The point is he was talking about was it microwave or radar they were using to heat up their food up on this freezing mountain? You think of Ethiopia as hot, but it was cold up on the mountaintops. And they were like, you know, it might not be a good idea that we're, uh, you know, even close to this if it's heating up the food. <laughs> I mean, you know, radio engineers will tell you at those transmitter sites, don't get up against the transmitter. That's why they got the transmitter sites somewhere else. Uh, in the old days, they'd have it right on top of the building. Well, you don't want to be uh, you don't want to be you know renting out that apartment right underneath there. Because the good news about this frequency pollution is, according to the engineers, again, I don't know much about computers. I don't know much about radio waves. I read the studies. I talk to the engineers, and I just give it to you in a layman's term. Uh, but uh, what I try to do is 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 you know just get the basics, and it's this: with most forms of transmission. Whatever the antenna length is, it cuts its power that it's hitting you with by half every length of the antenna. So if there's a cell tower a mile away, you're not getting that much from it. But let me tell you, if you live right underneath it, oh baby, you're getting hurt. Or if you've got one of these little cell phones crammed right up against the side of your head while it's sitting there transmitting. Uh, but... Um, there is uh, so much to go on here. Let me just read these. Interesting uh, little points here uh, that are going on. Billy Corrigan again wants me to just mention to everybody that uh, Smashing Pumpkins founder. Hey, Alex, Billy Corrigan, I'm at St. Louis, and TSA is doing random pat downs as people are getting on plane. Five agents just pulling people out of line, full body uh, searches. The people look in total shock. Agents are stationed are stone-faced, looking at everybody suspiciously. It's awful. And I said, do you want to come on for five minutes or when you get off next stop? And he says, I don't mind you mentioning it. Show in Chinatown tonight. Or Chai Town. I guess that's Chicago. Is that what they call Chicago? Uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, so there you go. Good thing he doesn't mind me mentioning it. Ah, uh, boy, I tell you what. Uh, where is Max Kaiser? You guys give me an update? He, Max has never uh, never not shown up for us. I, was it all nailed down for him to be on the show? Yeah, this would be kind of an explosive interview today with me as dingy as I am and goofy and then mixing that. In fact, right before we were trying to get Kaiser on, John Bounds like, oh, man, this may go crazy today, man. This may go crazy today. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, uh, <laughs> where is my Max Kaiser? That's not very nicey. Well, I hope he's all right. He might be sick or something, too. You never know. Yeah, his Skype may be blocked. It says busy. Hmm. Well, whatever. I got a bunch of other news I'm going to get to, too. Uh, Spain seeks to outlaw filming cops weeks after a footage showed police beating demonstrators. I mean, what a fundamental right to film police. And all over the U.S., well, it's 14 states now, they're arresting and prosecuting people, sometimes that... The cops come and the people have a camera on their house and they're arresting them, calling it wiretapping when it's a public camera. Uh, but it's not illegal to film Hulk Hogan unknowingly in, his, in a bed with a woman. I mean, of course, that's totally illegal. Uh, and it's just crazy. And, and I have had cops in Texas come up and say, turn your camera off. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to. You're interfering with us. And I'm like, you're 100 yards away at your checkpoint. 
Oh, come on, man. Don't destroy America. You really want your kids growing up in a country where you can't, you're threatening my family? I go, see, now, now you're going to frame me? You know, I mean, I've actually had that happen. It's like, come on, stop acting like that. You ought to be embarrassed. And, and the problem is they don't want good cops anymore in most places. They've got some small towns and middle-sized cities that have great police forces. Very professional, really serve the community, but that's the exception now. The norm is kind of a bunch of thugs with, with good cops, and the thugs are kind of taking over. That's, that's the, the transition, and then a bunch of cities are scary. I mean, it's scary because the cops are on power trips, they look craved, and they, they want to scare you. And it's like, it, it doesn't, I say it's scary, it scares me for the country, but it just gets me into a very aggressive mode. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm the type of guy where I'm walking down some little green belt path and a couple guys come walking by thinking they're tough or whatever. And I act friendly and I'm just like, but my subconscious mind, you know, it was like saying, boy, I hope they start something because I'll grab them and bash their brains out. They think they're tough. You know, the, you, you know, it's kind of like that thing. Of, I'm not looking for trouble, but you know what? Once it starts, you, you know, it, it, it's like I'm, I'm a big monkey. I'm a big ape. You know, killer ape here. I mean, I'm not literally saying I'm a killer ape, folks. Not getting into some discussion about, you know, the origins of man. My point is, is that. And there's a lot of other mean people out there. I'm not saying I'm tough. The point is, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a man. And, uh, you know, once the, once, the, once the fist starts swinging, I'm not afraid. In fact, I'm snorting and biting and snapping and kicking. And it's not elbowing and, you know, and headbutting and drooling. And, you know, uh, and, and, and it's, it's not pretty. And I don't know why I'm telling you. The point is, I, I, just, I just can't be around it anymore. I just cannot be around thugs who want a rigged game where they are, quote, paramilitary, and then we're the enemy. Because that's what it is to have military op operations domestically and police that are basically militarized. Uh, that's what it is, is that they're here to kill people and break things once you have military as police. That's why you have laws against that, which they've now completely overthrown. And so I see gang members, scum, thugs, whether they're in uniforms, whether they're gangbangers, whatever they are, if you are a gang of people, because I'm the sweetest guy in the world, but if you're a gang of aggressive people, I have instincts. And my instincts are, you know, I start going into you know, uh, Captain Caveman mode. I mean, I mean, we're all like that. And, and, and the thing is, you've got all these wimps and, and people that they want the image of power. They don't know real power would be embarrassed of acting like that. And I'm just, I'm just telling all the thugs out there across the, you know, the board, the real men of this country know what's going on. Okay, and, and, we, and, and we're not looking for trouble. But let me tell you something. We're not going to your FEMA camps. We're not licking your boots. And we know what's going on in this game over. Uh, and, and we need to support good police and military, but there is a battle for the hearts and minds of these people going on. I'm going to open the phones up because I only took a few calls for Bagner. They're wide open now. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Phones are open, so we'll open the phones up and take your calls on any question or comment you have. I want to thank everybody that is donating in the 48-hour transmission. Uh, money bomb, InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. Do not donate if you're in bad straits. But if you're a business owner and you built that, well, you better support us because the globalists are taking people's money and then using it against you with MSNBC. They get taxpayer money. We don't. We're here saying, hey, free association, you want to help us get satellite uplinks free to air to reach the world? Come on in to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com and donate or 888-253-3139. We'll be right back. Yeah, it's what I thought. Max Kaiser's Skype isn't working, and we finally got through to him, but it's got bad audio, so we're going to get him on landline. He'll be with us in the next segment. We will take calls while Max Kaiser's on, uh, getting into now the admissions in mainstream media, so now it's reality. Uh, you know, if they didn't say the ocean was blue at, at high noon, that it wouldn't be blue, but if they said it was blue, then it would be blue, because, you know, they run things. They're now saying it's a global depression. So we'll get what us, uh, Max Kaiser's take on that. Uh, I know one of your favorite guests, one of my favorite. Uh, so that's coming up. Uh, let's go to Dean, who wanted to talk to Bagneric, but Bagneric's uh, gone now. Uh, and uh, so you're talking to me, and then we're going to Philip and Nay and Jim and Josh and Keebler and everybody else. Uh, Dean, you're on the air. Go ahead. Alan, thank you for my call. And a couple things that have happened to me recently. First, I would like to say to everybody, be a Paul Revere Jr., Buy a couple memberships to Prison Planet. Buy 20, 30, 40 InfoWar magazines. Hand them out to everybody you know. Leave them in doctor's offices. I went with my family down to West Palm Beach two weeks ago. I was carrying my InfoWars. I carry about three to six of them. And on the outside of that, I carry my nun bear called a conspiracy. I make it obvious, so I get InfoWarriors coming up to me. However, 
I had TSA follow me into the uh, restroom, one of them. Then when I came out to meet my family, there were three more walking with him, tailing me. So I did. Was this at an airport or, or, or uh, I mean, they're now on the streets, I know. Where was this? this? This is in the airport after security. This was going to the gate. Oh, yeah, we've had TSA now climb up in cars. You know, they hear my radio show now at the checkpoints. I mean, they are political officers, well, which obviously hate freedom. Uh, so uh, uh, tell us what happened. Well, I said, all right, well, let me see if this is true. I bore off to the right into a gift shop. They tailed me. Yeah, they're gang members. I my family. So I left and started going towards my gate. They stood there like zombies. I went up to them. I said, all right, let's go. We're going to the gate. And they had, like, expression, expressionless looks on their face. Well, yeah, because you're supposed to get real scared and not turn around and face them. But they were, they were looking at my InfoWars. They were looking at my uh, None Dare Call, a conspiracy book. And I do recommend for anybody, buy two, three, four memberships and... Give them out to your friends because you can get up to six people logged in to each membership. It's well worth the waking. Yeah, yeah. Let me be clear. We charge for this magazine. I'm going to be honest. We're, I could charge more and actually make money, but but I mean, right now we're just making it right at profitable. So we have a model for people that want to put them out themselves. You know, franchising them. And, and, and for people that franchise will be able to charge more because we're for all not communist. But I have this right at break even because uh, I want to be able to get as many of them out. I mean, that's what I'm into. I mean, I really get off on putting 50,000 of these on the streets of Austin. I put another 20,000 out. We really did like 120,000. Advertisers paid for 100,000. I did 120,000. I just can't control myself. Uh, and uh, I put them all up and down I-35 from Round Rock to San Antonio at, at, at most of the gas stations. Uh, and I just can't help it. I'm going to now put it in the hill country. You know why? Because I love my beloved Texas. And you know what? I, I'm just going to put these out. And, and, and the sponsors are coming through to be able to have us break even. Because it's a thrill to know 70,000 glossy magazines, it's now in gloss, are out there covering the New World Order, their quotes, how they want to kill us, their admissions. And, and, and people are, are handing these, uh, passing these on. These are having a huge effect. As everybody else gets out of print, we go into it. That's my instinct. It's proving right. I only go with my gut. You know, good, good Lord above, discernment, whatever you want to call it. And, and absolutely, folks, buy them in 10 packs up to 100 packs at cost and just give them to people. In fact, I just had an idea. We should have a subscription that monthly charges where people say get a 10-pack cent on top of, you know, the subscription where you get one cent. Uh... And again, down the road, it's going to become more profitable because that's the model we need to sustain ourselves. But I just wanted this to really flood things. And it's starting to happen. But I mean, again, we've got to get the bureaucracy going here in my office to be able to get it all done with all these franchisees that want to pick it up uh, and uh, print it in their area, but also, again, put half their local content in to really have an effect. There's a lot of legal issues with that and things because, you know, then if they say something that we can't prove, it has to be their own standalone and they're liable and things. So, so there's a lot of things, you know, that we're working on. But, yeah, it's, it's very, very exciting. And, and people need to know we're 110 percent, folks. When you donate to us or buy books and videos at InfoWarsShop.com, you are funding the front lines of the restoration to restore our republic. Uh, anything else, Dean? Now we got to be, everybody has to be a mega info warrior. And it's amazing that I've been personally training people for over 30 years. Hold on, I want to, Max Kaiser's coming up, but I want you to finish what happened with the TSA and, uh, and, and you out there training people. And we're going to go to the great Max Kaiser uh, straight ahead. Uh, Max Kaiser is finally with us. His Skype's been up and down. Hopefully he'll be able uh, to, to, uh, to be there, maxkaiser.com. Real fast, Dean, finish your point. What did the TSA do when you finally turned around and said, I know you're following me? The TSA said nothing, and I think what they were looking for is for me distributing information to anybody because I had a handful of the InfoWars magazine, and I had my book. They were oh, American scum trying to communicate and pass messages in the prison. You wanted to pass messages in a supermax? The warden doesn't put up with that scum. They weren't too friendly, put it that way. So, so anyways, getting back to you, 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 you were saying you train people. Yeah, for 30 years, I've been a personal trainer. In my 20s, I won a heavyweight kickboxing championship. I won the Tough Man Contest, developed asthma, became fat and asthmatic, then turned 40 and started competitive bodybuilding, won the AAU Masters Mr. America, competed 20 times, won the world championship, had many, many clients, 
getting them in better shape, whether you be 10 or 90. As soon as Obama took office and weeks after that, months after that, I started losing clients, a lot of clients, because they didn't want to hear what I had to talk about with the, the worldly events of what's going on. And it's tough to separate them, Alex. I don't know about you, but you're, we're passionate. I'm passionate about saving our country, about waking people up. And I think it cost me my career. Well, look, we're going to lose everything if we don't wake people up. But I want to look you up, Dean. What's your name? Uh, I'm under fatbusters.net. All right. We'll, we'll check you out. Maybe we should get you as a sponsor. You sound like a guy that knows what he's talking about. Thank you very much. You're selling us. We'll sell you. The salespeople will be calling if your products are top flight. Which I'm sh All right. Anyways, getting back to what I was breaking down here. It's InfoWars Money Bomb 2012. I'm going to get serious now and get focused because... If he's serious, he's an incredible interview. If I joke around, well, he's worse than I am, and, well, you know what ends up happening. It sounds like a morning zoo. Max Kaiser of MaxKaiser.com joins us, and uh, he's here. We're going to take calls as well. Uh, Max, i got to say it. Every time you're on, every few weeks, and you're gracious to come on with us, I know you're over there in England. It's late. Uh, my friend, I mean, the Stiglitz announces depression in Europe. It's all banker occupation. Uh, the Iran situation's heating up. What is the latest, Max Kaiser, on the announcements of the euro going under one megabank and the, and, the, and the Rothschilds and Rockefellers merging that the Financial Times of London's reporting on? What is the latest, um, Max Kaiser, inventor of the Hollywood virtual stock exchange system, retired top broker uh, and all-around uh, TV and radio host, Max Kaiser, what is the latest? Latest. Hey, Alex, great to be back with you. Yes, uh, what's happening? You know, we're here in London because London is about to experience a pretty sharp collapse that, that's going to follow Greece and follow Spain. Uh, it's going to come to London. The, the, the Prime Minister, David Cameron, he, um, he, he's picked a fight with the European Union, the European Commission. And the European Commission, the ECB, which includes, of course, Germany, France uh, primarily, and they operate out of Brussels, they don't want Britain. Uh, Cameron keeps saying that, you know, we, we don't agree with your bank reforms. Uh, but the fact is that Britain's, uh, Germany's playing a masterful game here because they're trying to kick uh, Britain out of the Eurozone completely because they want Frankfurt in Germany to be the major banking center in Europe to, to supplant London as being the major banking center. And the banking center here in London has come under incredible attack for fraud, uh, the Barclays LIBOR rigging scandal, uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, and Lloyds Bank, and um, all the major banks here are now embroiled in major scandals. And David Cameron, the Prime Minister, keeps talking about he wants to defend the banks from regulators. Uh, meanwhile, the people in Europe are saying, it's so toxic in London. It's such a train wreck in London. It's such a, a regulatory cesspit. We don't want anything to do with London. So uh, they're going to do everything going forward in euros. The British pound is going to be an isolated currency. Britain is going to be more and more isolated. And nobody here really understands that. So we're here. We moved the show from Paris to London because we want to document over the next 12 to 24 months the collapse of Britain into a, a, a Greece-style social chaos. So that's your prediction. What do you say on your prognosis for the total collapse that you believe will start being triggered in April? And again, quantifying it simply, what a total collapse is. Right. The, uh, I've been sticking to my prediction of total uh, currency collapse by April, anytime between now and April. And I haven't changed my thoughts on that. Uh, the situation, as you pointed out at the top, continues to deteriorate in terms of people recognizing that there is uh, more of a depression going on around the world. In, in the U.S., you have something very deceptive at the moment in that real estate prices are up, let's say, over the past two quarters. But if you look at what that's all about, you find that the hedge fund community, the fast money community, is showing up in Phoenix and Florida, Detroit. They're throwing money at these properties as flippers uh, to make a quick buck. But there is a, a very concentrated and a very small number of funds. But there is no wide-scale housing recovery as such. So that number. So it's is little micro stuff. bubbles here and there. Exactly. A great way to put it. It's a micro bubble. If you look at the stock market today, we're seeing something interesting, Alex. Uh, in that the stock market is losing 
you know, to, to, to use a Wall Street term, it, it's losing its leadership. So Intel, Microsoft, McDonald's, and General Electric, these are big companies, big capitalized companies. They're all trading down. Google yesterday, of course, came in with bad earnings. The stock dropped 10% in five minutes right on the opening. You also have Apple Computer now. Uh, is trading down 60 or $70 from its all-time high, and it looks like Apple Computer is going to go through a period of uh, trading down. Now, it's very significant when you're talking about Apple Computer because you're talking about the biggest company in the world by market cap, over $600 billion. It's by far the biggest component of the NASDAQ, which is that huge part of the market in the United States that has the fast growers. or that some Yeah, that's Bernie growers. Madoff's uh, creation. Very loving. Bernie Madoff was one of the was one of the um, chairman at some point of Nasdaq, and he was uh, involved. That's where his platform, where he committed a lot of the fraud that he did commit. But even before Bernie was there, and now after Bernie was there, it's the place where technology companies like Google, Apple, Amazon, and these others go public. That's where they're traded. What's going and on with Facebook? What are these uh, these uh, sell offs of things like Apple? What does that foretell? Well, the uh, Facebook is aligned with a company more, I would say, if you look at a company I've mentioned on this uh, show before, Zynga, the virtual currency and virtual property company. Zynga announced horrible earnings and is crashing down. It's down something like 80 or 90 percent from its IPO, which was only six months ago. So that impacts very negatively on Facebook. Facebook has yet to really come up with a business plan that would indicate that they're going to make some significant money going forward. Uh, so that's a, that's down in the teens again. Went public at 38. It's down below 20. It got to as low as 17 and a half. There's been a report by Janet Tavacoli recently, very respected Chicago-based money uh, manager and analyst who thinks Facebook is going to trade down to five dollars a share. So that would be more than a 90 percent drop from its initial public offering. So that's also very negative for these markets because nothing can go public. Uh, you got the big cap stocks are trading down. Today, of course, is the 25th anniversary of the crash of 1987, which I was there. I participated in that crash. I was working in New York. I know it very well. I sent uh, Chris, your, one of your producers, a video when I was on CBS News being interviewed after the crash of 87. You see Max Kaiser is a 27-year-old stockbroker. It's kind of amusing. Uh, uh, so I'll tell you what, I want to find that video. Uh, Chris, the main producer, is out because he, he went like you know 20 hours and went home. Uh, and he's coming back tomorrow as we're going to 11 a.m. tomorrow, oh, okay. the 48-hour transmission. Was, but let me just ask you the name of the video, and we'll pull it up. What's the name? It's called Max Kaiser Crash of 1987. My my bit comes in at around two two minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, Max Kaiser, the crash of 87 on YouTube. That'll get it? Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll pull and, and that so up. Here we have that. that, that that's the, it's, a, it's a fun piece. Uh, it goes back 25 years. And when I was working as a stockbroker in New York, uh, during the crash. But a great uh, story came out today from PIMCO. You know, PIMCO is the biggest bond manager in the world. Bill Gross is, uh, manages uh, hundreds of billions of dollars. He made a comparison between now and 1987 with, with something called portfolio insurance. And I know this very, very well from my days on Wall Street. People with large stock market accounts, you sell them what's called portfolio insurance. You give them the illusion that they only have 2 or 3% risk in their portfolio by trading options. Uh, but, of course, when you have so many people doing the exact same trade over billions and hundreds of billions of dollars worth of stocks, you end up with a huge concentration that eventually blows up, as it did in 1987. Now, what we have today in the year 2012 is we have this similar contraption to portfolio insurance. It's called derivatives. And people believe that these derivative contracts are giving them protection on the downside that they can buy these huge positions, and if they hedge their positions using derivatives, that their risk is manageable and quantifiable. And what I can tell you right now, and this is, plays into my thesis of between now and April, global currency collapse, is that once again, we will discover that that is impossible to insure everyone's portfolio equally. That's an impossibility, and yet they sell it as, it, as, as it's a possibility, and we're going to see once again a crash, except it'll be 1987, but 20 or 30 times bigger, and it'll be a, this time a currency crash, 
And it's in the it's baked into the cake. It's it's in the pipeline. But the thing that'll fix it will be having checkpoints on the highways and TSA groping our families and funding Al Qaeda to attack nations. And then they'll have a fake patsy who they give a visa to and bring into the country, try to blow up the Federal Reserve, the poor little sweet Federal Reserve. They would never stage a false flag patsy event. I mean, this is just Max Kaiser. We should be thanking the bankers for what they're doing. America is having a nervous breakdown. The, the TSA events and these fake uh, presidential debates are something you would see in a mental ward. <laughs> suffering from d d deep dementia and uh, psychotropic dementia and, and other mental illnesses. I agree. All right, so it's Have you ever crazy. watched a crazy person, say a homeless person? It's very sad, but you sit there maybe in a cafe watching them out the window, and you start feeling crazy watching the craziness. I mean, you know, don't look in the abyss lest you become the abyss. I mean, this is really getting nuts, Kaiser. Well, it's a combination of a, a mental asylum and a cult, because you also have cult-like qualities. When you have, like Mitt, Mitt Romney, He's not a psychotic so much as a cult leader. He's like Jim uh, Jones and the cult of Guyana, where he got everyone to drink the, the, uh, the, the Kool-Aid laced with cyanide. And that's what private equity is about. That's where he comes from, the world of private equity, where he, he, he hypnotizes people into believing that by stripping corporations of all their assets and selling them off and firing everybody, that somehow that's good for the, for the, for the economy and good for America. That's like burning down your house and saying, I had to do it because nothing else could have saved the house, so I burned it down. Or America, remember in Vietnam, they had to destroy the village to save the village. You know, Mitt Romney's attitude is we've got to burn down these corporations, strip them of all their assets using private equity to save them. And he wants to take that cult-like mentality and apply it to America. He wants to do a leverage buyout of America, sell all the assets he possibly can to private bankers, Save the difference for himself so his net worth goes... And have us billion. pay taxes to give him banker bailouts. I mean, that's important. Is That's free market. Well, no, it's a sideshow. The, the point is that Mitt Romney looks at other oligarchs around the world, and he wants to be a 10 to $15 billion player as well. He is jealous of the 15 to $20 billion players. He's got less than a billion dollars. So in his mind... He's a shrimp dick, as we used to say on Wall Street. So he's got to really step up his game. So he's f figured out that if he does a leverage buyout of America, he can make himself 10 or $15 billion, which he could if he pulls it off. Uh, on the other side of the aisle, Barack Obama, uh, somebody mentioned on your show earlier, I think it was Gerald Salente, that the Obama deception was a fantastic film. And I, I've said that for the last seven, what, four years, I guess that the Obama deception is the best Alex Jones film because it totally predicted what happened. I myself was taken in by Obama when he was running for president. I gave him the benefit of the doubt, like an idiot. Uh, your film cut through all that, and it's been completely true. He's, he is an absolute a nothing but a puppet, empty suit. He, he, he reneged on every single promise except one. He did buy his kids a dog. Well, and he eats organic but doesn't want us to. You know, I, I watch Obama. He looks very unhealthy now. What is it that happens to presidents where they go gray and they age 20 years in four years? Well, what happens? Do they you know, maybe have their own body scanner there? Or are aliens in the basement and they replace their brain? I mean, well, I mean, I mean, what's going on here? I have no doubt that being president of the United States is a stressful job. And since you have to be on, uh, on call 24 hours a day, I'm pretty sure that the president is on drugs 24 hours a day and that his his entire schedule is medicated so that he is ready to make a decision because at any given moment something might happen that he needs to make a decision on and we saw that with George Bush I think George Bush his reputation for being quote unquote dumb was overplayed I think in his case he was less able to handle the demands of being Oh, yeah, when he was governor, he had brown hair. He gave pretty good speeches without teleprompters. And within about a year in office, he was a gibbering uh, lobotomy patient. Right. Those are the drugs that they have to keep you uh, alert to, to make these decisions. And 
once you enter the presidential bubble, you completely lose track with what's happening. No, no, no. That's just like the ancient Chinese bounding people's women, uh, you know, bounding women's feet, not letting them walk. I think that the whole cloistered inner cult, like JFK injecting them with methamphetamine, exactly. It's well known. They absolutely, it's your responsibility to get up at 5 a.m. We have to have this briefing. Don't worry, sir. The Air Force takes these pills. They take them immediately. And then, huh, those pills may feel horrible. Don't worry, sir. We have an injection for you. And it's kind of this medical tyranny that's taken over the rest of the West. It really takes over the president. I really wish in America you had the possibility of a genuine grassroots campaign like a Teddy Roosevelt or somebody who comes up from who really communicates and then becomes elected based on a, a philosophy and an ideology and, a, and conviction that they believe in. But in America today, uh, anyone who comes along, like a Ron Paul or even a Ralph Nader, who I think had a lot of good qualities, uh, you know, they get decapitated by the media, who is, of course, uh, sponsoring the ads. They sponsor the I hear you, Max. Stay there. We found that two and a half minute clip with uh, Dan Rather talking about you. I come in at, I come in at two, two minutes and. Yeah, yeah, minutes. we're going to play the whole thing because it shows these stockbrokers acting like five year old kids with like six cigars in their mouth and stuff. This is who runs things now. A bunch of guys trying to show off to each other. Folks, I'm not going to PBS this and, you know, every month sit here and beg for money on air. It's a listener's idea. Money Bomb's great. We raise about $200,000. We usually raise about three hundred dollars to 500000 over a day. We're doing a 48-hour. We need this to get extra satellite uplinks and the systems we need. It's very expensive. I mean, we're coming from nothing here, up to 15 million people a week. And, you know, we have sponsors and things we sell, but sometimes to expand, we need the support. So I want to thank all of you that have donated and ask others to donate today. Uh, if you can at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or 888-253-3139. Now, if you're watching us at PrisonPlanet.tv right now, we're going to your calls in the next hour with Max Kaiser. And we got an Ask Christie coming up. we got a whole laundry list of amazing guests after that. Look at the full roster and send out the free video feed, everybody you know. You can at least email it out to people or post it on your Facebook or Twitter at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. We can punch it up on screen. But if you look on screen now, if you're a radio listener, um, again, just go over to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com, and then you can see everything that's on screen right there, punching that up. Uh, it's flashback. Max Kaiser discusses the 87 stock market crash on Dan Rather's show. But I want to play the whole clip because you can see the still there at 17 seconds. You know, stockbrokers laughing with six cigars in their mouth, little kids making jokes. And, and these are the people that are in control now, disconnected from reality, taught eugenics is great, taught it's good to rob everyone, taught it's good to cheat everyone, and Max can attest to all this. We're going to play this clip and then get Max's take on it and then go to the next hour and take your calls. Uh, but let's uh, go ahead now. Uh, and again, if you're listening on AM and FM, support those local stations. And if your station, you know, uh, doesn't carry the, the next hour, Again, it's important. The video feed is at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or InfoWars.com to continue watching. But here's flashback. Max Kaiser discusses the 87 stock market crash on Dan Rather's show. Here it is. And not to New York broker Max Kaiser. But the idea of a yuppie, you know, money uh, without stopping, that, that's not the case anymore. I'm, I personally, I'm glad to see it. I'm sick of yuppies. No more yuppie chow. No more yuppie magazines. No more yuppie clubs. No more yuppies. Great. That's the only thing we accomplished, if anything. We got rid of the yuppies, and I'm, I'm happy about it. All right, we got Kaiser for the rest of the hour. We're going to go and ask Christy later. Joseph Ferris coming up. It's a huge laundry list of incredible guests. I promise we're going to get to Jim in Illinois listening on 13, uh, 1530 AM, WCKG and others. Uh, Josh and Jeff and Mike and many others. Toll-free number to join us, 800-259-9231. But, but what did happen in the 87 crash, and, and boy, that foretelling thing of the guy from the Depression saying people wouldn't be able to deal with what we dealt with, now things are 20 or 30 times worse, like you said. What will it be like if there is a total collapse? I mean, it'll just be, I, I can't imagine what it'll be like with all these modern super wimpies. They're not even yuppies. They're super trendy wimpy wimpies. Yeah, since the 87 crash, there's been wave after wave of deregulation to make subsequent crashes worse. We had the dot-com crash, which was worse in 2000. You had the uh, subprime bubble and crash, which was huge. Uh, now we're heading into the mother and father and cousins and uncles, the biggest crash of all, because the brokers on Wall Street and in the city of London believe that they can technologically hedge themselves against this risk. 
the exact same thing that led to the crash in 87, that you could put on multi-million dollar trades but be hedged, that you knew what the risk was and it was quantifiable. They've made this mistake every five or six years and the crashes get bigger and bigger. Now they've done the same thing with the global currency market, which is a $4 trillion per day market. And when this blows up, as it will between now and April, then you're talking about global currency collapse and you're talking about, of course, gold and silver um, trading up to, again, keep continuing to trade up at all-time highs against every major paper currency in the world. By the way, they uh, are having more U.S. envoys and front people killed at embassies around the world. Security chief dies in Beirut blast, live updates, and they're saying Assad's behind it. I want to talk some about that proxy war against the Syrians and the Russians with al-Qaeda on the side of the West. I mean, it's just... It's very bold to know the media will never point that. I mean, they point it out, but people don't even know what they're reading. We're going to be getting to that. But just briefly, because we're going to come back and take calls, Max, for a while. How crazy does it have to get? I mean, now al-Qaeda publicly works for the West? Well, I was at the House of Commons yesterday, and I had lunch with George Galloway, who is now back in government here in the U.K. And uh, we're planning a trip to Beirut. Remember, I, I talked to you from Beirut once before. We did a few shows from Beirut, Lebanon. And uh, we're planning a trip to go back. Uh, clearly, um, there's a lot of action there again. And uh, we want to get a front row seat and do a little trip over there. So hopefully we can do a lot, another live show from Beirut to the InfoWars audience. Absolutely, Max. I mean, I tell you, um, <laughs> again, I just keep saying I'm pinching myself because it's all coming true. We've been totally right. It's getting worse by the minute. It's getting more and more insane. And I've got this feeling we ain't seen nothing yet. Well, the, you know, it's all economic and finance and the uh, progression of the conquest of the economy by Wall Street and the city of London has continued uninterrupted for 30 years and it's gained speed during Clinton. You know, he got rid of Glass-Steagall. He brought about the, um, the uh, Commodity Futures Modernization Act, which made derivatives trading legal. Before that, they were considered gambling and illegal. And under Clinton and, and then Obama, we've had just more deregulation and more escalation of these global fraudsters who can have us by the throat. You remember back in 2008 when Hank Paulson wanted to give his buddies at Goldman Sachs a multi-billion dollar bonus? He took the senators back, back to the back room and threatened martial law. The next day, they gave him three quarters of a trillion dollars. So they learned that all you need to do is crash the market a bit, a bit of a flash crash, do a 1987 style crash uh, you know natural gas was down eight percent in five minutes uh, uh, stay there we're going to finish up with that and go to calls ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for joining us today max kaiser is our guest and we are in the middle of this 48-hour transmission it started yesterday at 11 a.m runs until saturday at 11 a.m uh, and if your local AM and FM, you, you know, doesn't obviously can't carry the whole 24 hours, you can all go to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com and there's free audio and video streams there. And the power of you, the people, we, the people, emailing, Facebooking, Twittering, uh, sending out that link to everyone and, 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 you know, telling them who's here. It's Max Kaiser, Gerald Salente, uh, George Norrie. In fact, I have a whole list here. Uh, if you go to the site, uh, you can uh, go to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com and see see who is coming up. We're going to go to your calls here in just a moment and get more on the uh, engineer deterioration and also what's happening geopolitically. Uh, embassies all over the world and military bases uh, that are pro-globalist uh, are being bombed in counter-strikes. And I think there may be something, and people are like, well, who is it? Tarpley says that the Mormon mafia probably killed the ambassador. And, you know, this, and, 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 uh, and, then, you, and then you had... Um, Mr. Haglin on uh, from the Northeast Intelligence Network, and, and he says it's the Russians. Well, there's a lot of evidence pointing towards that, so we don't see it in the news. And then there's more of these bombings and more head of securities and embassies being killed. And you notice you're not seeing a big news item out of it. In fact, will you guys give me that? I just printed in there. Thank you. Uh, and... There is a proxy war against the Russians. Russian troops are dying. A Russian general has died. There's Russian Spitznats uh, army and, and um, um, uh, marine troops. Spitznats just means special forces. Fact, let me just get to this now, and then I promise I'm going to your calls. Uh, Jim is first, then Josh, Jeff, Hillbilly, uh, Mike, and others. 
Uh, but, but Max, this whole proxy war uh, that is going on and uh, raging all over the place and, and this latest bombing in Lebanon, that I'll just put on screen right here. I've actually just got it um, here up on my screen. So I can just pull that up for viewers myself. Um, where do you see this whole thing going, Max, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, craziness in Syria? Well, you know, it's, uh, it all goes back to Israeli-Palestine conflict. And Moscow apparently just came out with a statement saying they're going to get more active in defending the Palestinians against incursion from the occupying forces of, of Israel. So um, that's an interesting development because now uh, Russia is stepping up into the very hot, hot issue of the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict. You know, the, the Palestinians are very few friends. Uh, the, very few people, even in the Muslim world, support the Palestinians. Certainly not the Sunnis over there in Saudi Arabia. They're in bed with the Americans and and the British. Uh, the uh, the Shia Muslims, of course, uh, offer some support, but they're fighting a war uh, against uh, the troika of Israel, Britain, and Israel. So they're in a hot war. So now Russia is stepping in. So this is uh, very very interesting. I, I guess since America is sending three huge uh, battleships to uh, sit off the coast of Iran, uh, Russia figures, you know, why not? We're just going to make a scramble uh, over here and, and, and uh, make some friends in this community where we can secure some additional uh, oil and gas <laughs> reserves and let America blow itself up. Uh, they, they allowed America to enter Afghanistan to get blown up, you know, stuck in the Afghanistani territories. You know, Russia knows all about that. They, they hear America, come on into Afghanistan, get sunk in a quagmire for 20 years. Uh, now they're going to let them get stuck in this, this Iranian uh, conflict. So Russia's playing chess and America's playing checkers. But it's more than that. The global megabanks want to bankrupt America, want to demoralize our military, and they're getting hundreds of billions, 500 billion a year conservatively. Even the IMF admits that of, of smack, uh, heroin, uh, uh, you know, stuff they mainline uh, to ship it in so our sons and daughters can use it and then be put in private prisons owned by mega banks that launder the drug money and run the aircraft on record. Uh, so, I mean, it's all there. So, you know, we think of it as, oh, America's doing something dumb. Well, no, it's not. America uh, is there to be run into the ground like everybody else because these bankers are preying on everyone. I mean, isn't that really what's happening in the final well, equation? The U.S. has the reserve currency, which insulates them, as we've discussed before. That's why I'm saying that the biggest shock collapse of a country is going to be Britain. That's why I'm here, to document the collapse of Britain into Greece-like anarchy, because this economy is getting set to crash spectacularly. The, the prime minister is isolating himself from the European a union, and he's got no friends when he really turns around and relies on Israel and, and America as friends. That's a joke. That's like having Genghis Khan and Jack the Ripper as your friend. So they're really setting themselves up for a tremendous collapse here. We want to be front row and center covered for, you know, the Kaiser report. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, bomb hits Beirut, live updates, London Guardian. Uh, and uh, Saeed Harari, the son of Rafiq Harari, the former prime minister who was assassinated by a bomb in Beirut 2005, has accused Syrian President Bashir Assad of orchestrating the killing today uh, of the head of security there. And there's more and more of these heads of security getting killed. And the word is the Ruskies, and I think, I think there's something to this. I'm not saying this is what people are like, well, which is it, Alex? You said this, you said that. Well, I mean, we don't know. We're trying to figure it out. All these people that know exactly what it is, you know, and, you know, one day into it have all the answers is pure baloney. We normally learn things in hindsight, which most people don't even care to know where Syria is or Lebanon is. It's just north of uh, Israel. Uh, but this is a huge proxy war, and it's getting crazier by the minute. Let's go to Jim in Illinois. You're on the air with Max Kaiser. You're a 1530 AM listener in Chicago, WCKG. Go ahead, Jim. Alex and Max, a dynamic duo. Good to hear your voice. Quick question for Max. Uh, you talked about Alex. We all know in our gut there's definitely something coming down the pipe. We don't know what and when. Economically, Max, what do we do to um, be prepared for this that's about to come? And quickly, Alex, after he answers, could you shift me back to your studio? Because studio guys, I'd like to direct them to a website. But that's a question, Max. What do we do to prepare? 
Go ahead. I, I mean, I, I mean, it's it's nothing that's different than what we've been saying for five years, Alex. I mean, I don't, do we have to say the same thing over and over again? The I mean, answer to solution. solution. Chicago. But, you know, it's obviously in a paper money collapse. Only keep money in the bank. Only keep money in paper money that you're happy to lose. Okay? That should be your guide. If you have money in the bank or you have money in paper money, dollars or euros, only keep money in paper that you're happy to lose. Because you're going to lose it. Okay? Only the only real money going forward is gold and silver. So that'll be your money. That's your wealth. If you don't have any gold and silver, you don't have any money. It's as simple as that. And that's that's the we're going back to the gold and silver as it's been the case for five thousand years. We've always been on a gold standard. Well, the elites are all now piling in and buying gold while bad mouthing it out of the other side of their mouth. Of course. Well, that's right. It goes through three stages. First, nobody wants gold and silver. Then the contrarians start to buy, like Ted Anderson, you know, back when it was $250, $300 an ounce, he started to buy gold and talk about it on your show. Then the second stage is the so-called smart money. This would be the George Soros. This would be the John Paulson, not to be confused with Hank Paulson. Other hedge fund managers, even PIMCO, which is a huge bond manager, they start buying big positions in these metals. The third stage is when the public enters the market and there's a panic buying stampede. That's when you see that manic burst like you saw in the 79.80 phase, right, where you saw gold trade to seven, $800 an ounce, but this time we're talking about gold topping out at $10,000 an ounce. Absolutely well said. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right about that. And don't, yeah, don't be mean to Jim, we have a lot of new listeners because that, that is a new affiliate in just the last few weeks there in Chicago. Uh, you know, they say, what do we do? I mean, they probably have an idea too, Max. They just want to hear what you have to say. Okay, great. Well, it's axiomatic that if you have a banking system that has $800 trillion in claims, that's the global derivatives market on a total base money supply around the world, not even one one-hundredth that amount, you're heading for a rebalancing of gold and silver at $10,000 an ounce and $500 an ounce, respectively. And by the way, on your show the other day, you said I was wrong about silver trading to $500 an ounce. Let me make this record clear. I said that before this bull market is over, silver will trade at $500 an ounce. This bull market is not over. We have five, six, seven years left on this market. We will see that $500 an ounce. Well, Max, I was, hold on, Max, 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 Max. Okay. Furthermore, furthermore, furthermore. Furthermore, 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 furthermore. Be quiet. <laughs> I can just turn him down, but this is entertaining. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I said if your <laughs> listeners, the people around the world, were each to buy a hundred, a one ounce or two ounces, you need a hundred million people, which is easily doable around the world. People being victimized by these banking charlatans, you could get to that five hundred dollars an ounce as whenever you wanted to get to five hundred dollars an ounce. It's because of lazy, no good, shiftless people around the world who complain and don't do anything that we have silver stuck at 34. Go buy one or hey, two. Hey, Max, more. Max, I was, I was not critical. I'm sick of their Put lazy. him on hold. Put him I'm sick of their Stop it, Max. Man. All right, getting back to what I was going to say. If, yeah, fade you down for just a minute there. I, I'm saying, I, I, if I remember your prediction, you were saying uh, uh, sooner than what's happened, $500 an ounce. And I was saying, Max is a smart guy. Most of what he said has happened. I hope he's wrong about this total collapse by April. And I said, you know, you haven't been 100% right. And that, that I don't have a heart attack over that. Go ahead, Max. You don't think uh, what your show is listened to very, very closely by people on my side. We dissect your show line by line, word by word, Alex, because we do the work necessary to keep abreast of the global trends. And we need to know exactly what you're saying because <laughs> that's what we do. Okay, we, 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 we're tracking you very closely, Alex. I don't know if you're aware of this, but you know, you, you can't say a word on the air or tweet a tweet without going through a direct compilation of data and information that I personally oversee. Okay, Lord Kaiser, I'm, 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 I am being watched. Uh, seriously though, uh, the good news is medical discovery, transfusions of your blood appear to rejuvenate the elderly. Well, the Queen Mother was getting blood transfusions forever. Remember Al Gore has a little refrigerator of blood. Let me tell you something. Candy corn does the same thing. <laughs> All right, let's not degenerate yet. Uh, I hope that answered your question, sir, in Chicago. That was a great question. Thank you. Uh, Josh, Jeff, Hillbilly, Mike. My, Mike's actually earlier than some of the other callers. We're going to get to your call straight ahead with Max Kaiser.
going to go back to Max Kaiser and your calls quicker here, but this is an alternate. They always announce old things like they're new. Like, up next, humans breathe oxygen. Amazing medical discovery. Transfusions of young blood appear to rejuvenate the elderly. I mean, that's been one of the biggest things they've done for 50, 60 years. They've known that. People with cancer, you name it. I guess they don't want you knowing any real treatments, but the rich people all get that. And now they've been doing transfusions on uh, gray-whiskered mice. And, uh, well, uh, looks like vampire movies are on to something so far. Really? Well, well, the stomach doesn't digest blood well, but there's mentally ill people that like it. But, it, but, but healthy blood, if it's not diseased with something of your blood type, if your cells are old and you're breaking down, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. Uh, it says, human history altering newsflash. Oh, yeah, talk about sensational when it's not warranted. Scientists have demonstrated that injections of youthful blood carry semi-magical rejuvenating qualities, at least for gray-whiskered mice. The researchers believe that the same might hold true for humans, suggesting the disease like Alzheimer's. It goes on. Uh, that's like saying, it's semi-magical. He got a heart transplant. Now he can walk. It's semi-magical. You know, you, I mean, Max Kaiser, what do you say to this? Perhaps... We should have a new tax where we have to like slit our throats and bleed directly into bankers' mouths. That might actually become something new where the TSA has to chop your head off and drink your blood to make sure you're not bad. They're more, more effective than the transfusions of young blood is fecal transplants. This is actually documented. You can look it up, do a Google search right now. If you have an enema with somebody else's fecal matter, uh, the, and the germs and the <laughs> colony from the uh, transplanted fecal matter actually give you greater immune. It, it boosts your immune system. Look up fecal transplant. On your <laughs> Where do you come up with this Go stuff? Look with it. Go look for it. Go look for it. I told you. It's right. This is better than the blood transfusion. <laughs> I'm afraid to even search that. Search that. Well, your listeners aren't, aren't afraid like you, you big scaredy cat. <laughs> All right, knock it off, Kaiser. Let's talk to Josh in Georgia. You're on the air. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. Josh hey, in Georgia. Look it up. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Jo uh, J uh, Josh in Georgia, go ahead. You're on the air with a madman. Hey, Alex. I uh, just want to say I've been a fan since uh, a few years ago. Uh, I watched uh, Waking Life and uh, loved every minute of it, especially your little uh, segment in there. Um, uh, by the way, I've got to say uh, he's right. New York Daily News, uh, fecal transplant sounds gross but saves lives. What the heck? Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, uh, it's, all, it's, all, it's all truth with me. You know, and let, why don't you tell people that in that movie, Waking Life, Alex, I did the, your voiceover for that. I, I played you in that movie. That was my voice playing Alex Jones. Why don't you tell the truth? I didn't know that, but I, okay, I believe you. But be serious. The fecal transplant thing's real. This is not morning radio. And 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 and, and I I did my. It's me in Waking Life. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. I was just testing it. I wanted to see if you recognize even yourself. But there you are in the movie, bigger than life. And you're not getting a fecal transplant, but you're talking about it because it's healthy. <laughs> okay. Oh man, please, sir, please uh, stop. Uh, uh, let's go to Josh. Josh. Make sure it goes in the right end, Alex. A lot of people. That's enough. Mistakes. That's enough. We have a family. Go ahead, uh, Josh. Like the vine from that movie, uh, polyester. I don't know the movie. Go ahead, Josh. You have a question for uh, Alex. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, I've got. I've got a got a question for. Well, you can both chime in here. Um, it it's pretty much boils down to where do we draw the line? Uh, pl uh, police brutality on the rise. TSA. Uh, the Second Amendment on, on the, uh, the line of, of getting uh, cut out. The First Amendment, you know, these free speech zones. Um, I'm all for peaceful protests, but where, where is the line? Uh, listen, listen, they have announced they are coming. He is going to ban all the semi-autos and say we have mental problems and take our guns, which is not fair to most of us. It would be fair with Max. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's horrible the point we've gotten to here. Here's what you do. Everybody should mimic... What Benjamin Netanyahu did in the UN when he had the cartoon of the bomb and the big, big red marker. And he said, here's the line, and Iran can't cross this line. Okay, so now when you go to the TSA and you go through the airport, you take out a big cartoon of a, of, a, of, a, of a cartoon version of a bomb or something with a big red marker. When he comes to touch you, you say, here's the line, you're crossing the line. Then everybody, hold up. 
their Netanyahu poster and say, we're not going to cross the line. Yeah, this is the line. We're, you can't cross the line. And How I'll dare be, you say that weird men shouldn't be able to take your wife behind closed doors and rip her pants off and grab all of her. All right, I want to move quicker through your calls here, uh, but... When we sit here looking at what's happening in our world, we just have to start saying no to the power structure. Uh, Netanyahu can stand up with an image of a bomb and he won't get in trouble. If you do, they'll probably execute you even though there's no law. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of stuff now where people are just such spectators, so weak, so soft. The government wolves and corporate wolves see that and they're gonna take us down. And the country will collapse and the world will collapse. People become decadent slobs. And every time that happens, evil takes over, things collapse, things get tough again, people get tough again, and civilization comes back. This time, the corrupt elite have robots and drones and bioweapons, and they plan to just kill everybody. And I guess that's what the public wants, so they will murder you. Uh, but there are a lot of us, though, who don't like being self-propelled stomachs and who don't uh, like just buying into every lie, and um, I guess we're the extremist bad guys. Uh, listen, I want to commend everybody that's given so far to the InfoWars Money Bomb 2012 this once-a-year event so we can get the satellite uplinks, launch the show, free to air out to more people, uh, the TV show, and a lot of other things we want to get done around here. We've radically expanded our operations against the globalist, and uh, it's uh, really having a big effect. But I want to thank all of you that are calling and donating at 888-253-3139. And I want to thank all of you that are also uh, donating online with PayPal or credit card at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. You can also donate by getting a PrisonPlanet.tv membership and then sharing it with your friends and family. Six people can sign in simultaneously with the same passcode. So it's really six memberships a month for five ninety five. dollars uh, It supports us. Uh, every little bit counts when you buy ProPure water filters, live straw, discounted InfoWarsShop.com. Uh, if you give 100 bucks, you can get one of these T-shirts, uh, the, the Camouflage, Money Bomb, Liberty or Death shirts. Uh, we've got some really cool one-of-a-kind eBay uh, auction things like the Nyman microphone we use for about five years in here. Uh, it's up uh, there uh, on eBay. Uh, sledgehammers I just used to go through the wall. <laughs> Next door, we're expanding. All that is at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. And uh, it's just one more thing that helps us fund the operation. It's really been essential to what we've done so far. And I want to thank those in the last four years that donated to the Money Bomb. Uh, so thank you so much. We'll continue transmitting until 11 a.m. tomorrow, and I'll be back Sunday, 4 to 6. Uh, going back to your calls now for Max Kaiser. Let's go to Jeff, and then we're going to go to uh, Mike and Hillbilly and others. Uh, Jeff, you're on the air with Max Kaiser. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Hey, Kaiser. How you doing, man? Good. All right, look, I, I first I got a comment for both of you, and then I got a question for Kaiser. You know, with all the craziness and monotony that's going on with what these globalists are trying to accomplish, you guys really know how to make me laugh. Alex, two weeks ago, you called that older woman who got her free Obama phone. I think you said she was a cross between Elmo, Oscar the Grouch, and the Cookie Monster. I was crying when you said that. I could not stop laughing. And then you said, <laughs> after Obama gave us a phone, he's going to do more. I mean, dude, you really know how to draw out some humor out of that. Well, stuff. I tell you, it's all gallows humor. It's just me joking around because I'm really upset about this, and I would go crazy if I didn't make jokes about it and a few days after we did that somebody actually found elmo being interviewed on a tv show i think it's in canada and actually put the audio to it so we're going to play that in a moment for for people watching over uh at um infowarsmoneybomb.com because it's free folks free video stream uh going till 11 a.m but yeah i mean look it's good to have some local welfare it's good to help people that are in trouble but when it's federal and when it's designed to make people dependent it creates nightmares like that i want to get max kaiser's take on that and get your question for max but here is the obama phone lady meets elmo here it is obama. You got Obama phone? Yes, everybody in Cleveland, no minority, got Obama phone. Got Keep Obama in president, you know? He what? gave us a phone. He gave he you a phone? Do more. How do he give you a phone? You, you sign up. If you're, in, you're on full steps, you on Social Security, you got low income, you disability. Hey, I'm your voice. Okay, what's wrong with Romney again? Romney, he sucks. Period. There you go. Max Kaiser, what do you say to that information? I'm waiting for the Obama vibrator. You know, you should get uh, those Stop now. now. Hey, Max, seriously, what? you are an international TV host. What's going on? And then now once we get in the, this mode, it's not good. Uh, and don't give Obama any ideas. Please stop, sir. It's a family show. Every time you vote, you get a little sensation. You know, it's uh, give you a little... Okay, there you go. Now you're trying to do a comedy routine. Caller, do you have something serious to ask of Max? 
Yes, I do. It's besides the anime, the state article he did, which I found funny anyway. But I did want to say something seriously. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that you were uh, Kaiser on the phone the last time, on the last interview with him, and I guess your segment was up and it closed out, so I didn't get all the total stuff on it. But uh, with this fiscal collapse coming and our American dollar being used worldwide as our currency as well, why do you believe this this country is going to be the worst uh, place hit as opposed to, let's say, in Europe, which you're going to be when this collapse happens? And how come you're not going to be, let's say, where James Wesley said the better, better place to be would be like the Northwest, uh, part of uh, our country. How come you're going to be in Europe when this collapse happens? Well, the, as I've said about the currency collapse and the fiat money around the world, the U.S. dollar is a world reserve currency. There's and of the fiat money collapse, it will hold on to that and be one of the last to collapse. The British pound is teetering, which is looking bad. The Japanese yen is teetering, because the dollar is reserve currency. I have said that it would you know, be around longer for that reason. The last to go, but when it goes, most of our experts, and I agree, it's going to go the hardest. Now, as far as my personal location, I am here to cover the collapse in Britain, and but I am ready to go anywhere that is where I'm needed. You know, I'm not, phys I'm not anywhere in space for the, the duration of this collapse. Uh, I think the, if people are genuinely interested in is truly insulating themselves from what's coming, they need to sort out their passport situation. There was a great story on Lou Rockwell today, which you can look it up, about how the State Department in the U.S. will effectively make it impossible for Americans to get any passport at all. They're introducing a questionnaire, which uh, by the nature of the questionnaire, it's impossible to answer. They ask you things like, um, just ri ridiculous questions. Oh yeah, I had an article out of the Austin American Statesman from Sunday. I never covered it on air, guys. I tweeted a photo of it. I think it's out there in the stack. It's a you know, regular paper. That'll And, and it says, you know, should the government be asking uh, how many times you bathe a week? And that's right, the news. It, like, it says, like, how, who was the doctor that delivered you and who name everyone in the operating theater when you were born? Questions like that that are impossible. No, but I'm saying us. now the census is yearly and they're asking uh, uh, how much money do you have? When do you go to work? When do you bathe? I mean, the government is just uh, listen, you're talking about capital controls. They there's the, the, the IRS is saying if we say you hadn't paid us, you're not leaving the country. I mean, they really I, I agree with you. That's the well, but they're not going to be able to leave the country in any case because you won't have a passport at all. I'm saying if you read this article on Lou Rockwell today, it says you as an American will be unable to get a passport under any circumstances. They don't want anyone leaving at all for any reason. No, that's and what the TSA is issue. about. And then they're going right, to just exactly. And they're going to stop really you at checkpoints and drag you off. And it'll just be, well, they had to drag off 20,000 people this month. And they'll have like fat people, you know, globalists in uniform, just machine gunning us. I mean, folks, we're going to be 20 times more evil than the Nazis. But, but look at the, we say, what, uh, is there any inflation in the system? People say, no, there's no inflation. Look at how much it costs to buy a second passport. The cost of buying a a second passport on Nevis St. Kitts is $220,000. Uh, and in the uh, Republic of Dominica, it costs uh, $100,000. The price just went up 20%. That's where the inflation is. The cost of buying your way out of the hellhole just went up 20%. That's inflation. Well, we're going to dig that up, but I know that's been happening. But that's the thing is that we sit here and make sick jokes about all this. This is really happening, and, and all the idiots that work for the system that are complying with this, you're helping manifest this. The public's to blame, too, but you're 10 times more to blame, 20 times well, more to got, blame. It, it, you need, if you can't get a passport right away, a second passport in another country, you know, you definitely need to open a bank account overseas, you know, one or two different territories. You need to internationalize your life. It doesn't mean that you are necessarily going to leave the United States right away, but you need to be able to pick up a bag and get out. If well, they need, like the fact that, what is it, 20-something percent of Americans even have a passport, and, and now it's going to just be, it's a conspiracy theory. There is no country outside the U.S. because they already don't know where Syria and Libya is. They already think bin Laden's hiding in your wife's brassiere. I'm serious. They're going to say, breastfeeding never happened. You'll be arrested if you say that went on. Knowing how to tie your shoelaces will be rocket science level after all the fluoride. 
uh, and uh, saying that there's a country outside the U.S., they're going to say it's a flat thing floating in space. I'm telling you, the public would believe that. If they, I'm not joking. If they told them that the, uh, that the, that the United States is a floating uh, thing in pea soup, the general public would believe it. And if they told the general public to slit their throats, they would do it. They love it. They just want total tyranny. They want to be destroyed. They love it. They love it. Uh, to, to the caller, I'm just saying, you need to um, diversify and internationalize and hedge yourself in, in a number of Where's different Where's a good countries. place? Where's a good place? I mean, it's hard to get to because you got to have a lot of cash all But what about Switzerland? Well, exactly. It requires, uh, but Switzerland actually has come under attack. You know, the Americas have attacked uh, Switzerland since uh, U Union Bank of Switzerland, UBS, the biggest bank in Switzerland. They bought Payne Weber in, in, in Wall Street, my old firm. And as such, the uh, various regulatory agencies in the U.S. have now entered Switzerland, and they've had all those private accounts open, wide open. So Switzerland is no longer a safe haven. It's not considered a safe yeah. haven in the U.S. I, I, I hear you. Let's jump to more calls. In Europe. Let's jump to more calls. Uh, here, and I do have that article now. They're printing it. But but let's play this. I just don't want to make fun of the Obama phone lady. Let's remember Miss Teen USA 2007. This is the general public. In fact, th this is the brainiac. This is idiocracy that Mike Judge, of course, made a film about. This is the average person now that I talk to. Uh, I mean, our listeners obviously are informed and care. That's why you listen. And, and check what we say. But remember, the general public, you wonder why they laugh at you when you warn them? Because they literally do not know what planet they're on. Literally. Okay, people think it's like evil to even know how to talk now. Uh, and folks, I mean, I'm not joking. That A lot of people are like that, and they think, and they think it's cool. And, and, and I just can't imagine them during the collapse. They are going to, literally, folks, if they tell the bureaucrats to line you and your family up and shoot you, they're going to do it because they like doing it. They like the power. I mean, I'm telling you, the, the, these bureaucrats will rip the flesh off your bones if they're told to. They hate this country, and they hate anyone who can think. I'm sorry, Max, I'm ranting a bit. Caller, I guess that answers your question. Let's go to Mike in New Hampshire and then Hillbilly and uh, others. Uh, Mike, you're on the air, uh, light listening today during the evil money bomb. Uh, go ahead, sir. Fantastic. Thanks for taking my call, Alex. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, First, I'd like to I'd like to tell you that I, I, I'd like to show you that your efforts, what what they actually accomplish, the pebble in the pond. There's 350 million Americans, and if it wasn't for somebody sending me an email, um, there was a clip from American dictators one week after the 77 bombings. I wouldn't be the guy that I am today, and and I'll tell you who I am. I'm the crazy person that that's chirping everything that I that I see off the show that's talking about uh, micronutrients, that's talking about the economy, that's talking about inflation, talk, you know, just right across the board. And, and uh, you know, when I mention something like fluoride, people will say, you know, they'll sit there and they'll, you know, they, they just, it's they don't understand wh where it's coming Little from. The Americans such as... Uh... Yes, exactly, exactly. But but what I, I I'm not discouraged by it because I know that I'm planting seeds, and I know that down the line it's going to hit somebody upside the head like a brick, and they're like, "Oh my God, Mike Turner was right. He knew what he was talking about." And, and Max Kaiser, I I I first ran into you on the um, I, I think it was the Obama deception. Was it that or the fall of the republic or both? Republic, of course. Yeah. Well, I. I want to tell you, I, I, I watch your show now, and me and my guitarist, we both we both watch your show. Um, I Right off the bat, I sent it out. Sir, on there's no such thing as guitar. No one can play an instrument. That's too advanced. Such as Americans, Obama phone, he going to do more? I got an excellent guitarist that's, that's my uh, com comrade in arms. In Next, you're going to tell me that mammals are supposed to breastfeed, please. Well, or, the, you know. or, the, or that beef is supposed to eat grass. I mean, oh, ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, I mean, come look, on. I, I just want or that George you know, Washington I, is the is a good guy. FEMA says he's bad. Well, you know, I, I think I heard somewhere that he was a terrorist. Well, that's what FEMA teaches. It must be true. I mean, they're not the bad guys be. saying the founder of the country's bad. They're the good guys. Yeah, might is right, right? I well, mean, they I, have all the guns. That makes them right. Well, they, yeah, well, yeah. They, well, they, they 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 tell us they have all the guns and strut around all day, bugging their eyes out at us. But I uh, just just I've only got a couple of guns. 
and I'll use them if I have to. Oh, how dare am, you? Am I interrupting you guys? No, uh, I'm, well, I'm sorry if I'm, uh, you know, uh, interrupting. Do you want an Obama I, phone? Maybe you guys uh, need a room or something. Okay, uh, go ahead, Kaiser. Thank you, sir, for the call. Kaiser, yeah, okay. don't have fantasies here on air, please. Well, what's ahead. going on? I mean, I feel like I'm stuck in an elevator with two guys, and uh, you're going up somewhere, and I'm trying to get... <laughs> <laughs> what's the question? Okay, uh, 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 caller, did you have a question? Uh, he just He's wanted. Fun. He He's just wanted to. He watches my show. He oh, just great, man. You're, you know, no. You, this is the old mean stockbroker coming up, telling old lady, "Buy the stock, you wench." Listen, yeah, the yeah, thing. Give me your money, goddammit! What are you waiting for? Okay, stop, stop, Kaiser. This is out of control. Okay, let's not use the Lord's name in vain. That's bad, bad luck. Now listen, sorry, Lord. The Lord's for, a client of mine. Oh, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Uh, Look, stop no. it right now! My, my point is, Kaiser, is yeah. that he just wanted to tell you he liked your show and you insulted him. Well, look, the, the star of Hawaii Five O was my favorite actor, Jack Lord. That's who I'm referring to. I don't even know what that means. Is that okay? Let's talk to Hillbilly. You're on the air with, uh, well, Max Kaiser. Hey, how are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing all right. <laughs> Sounds like it. Hey, listen, I'm a Prison Planet TV member, Infowars team member, and uh, I shop at Infowars shop all the time. Thank you. Uh, Great stuff. Thank you. Uh, listen, uh, real quick, you're looking, I heard you mention before you're looking for a ministry to support Michael Rood, R-O-O-D, Rood. He is on the fight against the New World Order, just like you. Great stuff. You might want to check it out. Uh, second of all, have you ever heard of the Gerson Miracle? Uh, it rings a small bell. Uh, what was it? Was that when Max Kaiser okay. grew wings and flew around the room? <laughs> well, no, it was actually um, a doctor named Maxwell Gerson that, uh, um, that uh, the, the elite's poisoned, actually. He came up with a cure for cancer. His daughter is carrying on his work in Tijuana, Mexico, curing the cancer, and she claims she can cure any chronic disease. Well, there are a lot of treatments that they, sure, sure, there are a lot of treatments that they block. God bless you, sir. I appreciate your call. We're going to calls here for Max Kaiser. Oh, I want to say something. Mm-hmm. The, um, I wanted to bring it back down to something serious here. We were talking about these countries, different countries. You're saying, oh, Switzerland or different. You know, the two countries that are bordering America right now, Canada and Mexico, Canada has become a fortress. If you've ever tried to go into Canada, it is extremely difficult to do so, and you can't move money back and forth out of Canada, and people know this. But look, Mexico is becoming this way, too. You know, there's more pressure to keep Americans out of Mexico now than the other way around. There's Because Mexico, due to their huge oil position, et cetera, is becoming a, a state that is trying to keep Americans out within five or six years. You're going to see American, that whole wall between U.S. and Mexico, there to keep Americans out of Mexico. And by the way, Max, when you talk about this, it totally creeps me out because I know all the points you're saying are true. I have so much data on it, and it really is upsetting to be sitting here and seeing them just clamp down to steal everybody's wealth and property. And I don't even care about that. That It's my family. And then I've sworn to try to defend this republic, and it's a new world order. There's nowhere to run. But, man, I just hope the public knows we're not playing games here. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the point is that if you think that you're what you're saying or what I'm saying is uh, abstract in any sense or in the far horizon and is not immediate, look at what's happening to the two countries bordering America, Canada and they got the huge pipeline. That's the, that's the, as you cover on your show, that goes from Canada down to Mexico, and which is servicing actually, uh, you know, not America, but uh, foreign entities. And that is opening up a very strong police presence that is not answerable to any of those three countries individually, but for them collectively. And that's where the U.S. loses its sovereignty. You are right in the, 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 the kill zone, if you will, of that phenomenon because that pipeline... Oh, no, no, no. They're using pipelines and roads as multinational zones. The U.N. on record says they've taken over Austin on their website right. and, so that, and all the local right towns. Yeah, yeah. That's right there, right in your backyard. I mean, that's really happening now. And that's the, that should give people, listeners, the idea that this is not something we're talking about is in the fanciful future this is happening now it's unbelievable i mean it it, 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 it is just crazy i mean it'd be, it'd be better if the u.s did collapse like the old soviet union because 
Because if they're able to keep this going, I mean, there's nothing they won't steal because the public are thumb-sucking, mindless jellyfish begging to be gang-raped by the government. I mean, I just... Well, the mathematics are horrible because going back 40 years, which was the beginning of the post-gold standard and the creation of derivatives, there's been this tug-of-war between GDP growth, uh, GDP growth and debt creation. And uh, for years, you've had this give and take. You've had periods of slowdowns and recessions where the debt had become a, a overwhelming the GDP growth. Uh, and then you'd have these periods of growth to counteract that. But starting in 2007, and this is what makes this crisis different than any other crisis in American history before it, is that the debt now is so completely outrageously high as compared to any possible GDP growth scenario to grow America out of it that it's quite disturbing. And I'll give you this interesting statistic. The amount of GDP growth needed to get America out of its current economic problems would require burning more barrels of oil than there are in the ground. In other words, you've got about a trillion barrels of oil that have been burned since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. There are, by some estimates, a trillion dollars, a trillion barrels left. If you were to burn one trillion barrels of oil, you would not generate enough GDP growth to generate the taxes required to pay the existing debt. Yeah, and so they're going to, as Gerald Salente says, just go to pure prisons and giant death camps and people in black uniforms stomping around everywhere. I mean, it's just, it's hell itself being relieved. And then hopefully we got ahead of this and have exposed it enough where they're going to have trouble rolling it out. But we've got to fight them at every level and realize we have a bug-eyed, beady-eyed, criminal, evil government run by mega corporations with maniac heads and bankers who are well, all... Uh, uh, Alex, let me ask you this. Going back to the American Revolution, only a third of the people living in America wanted the revolution. I was, it was 3% started it and then 5% won it and, uh, as actual combatants, about 10% support. It's less than a third. It's like okay, so then you had like a third or so were sympathetic to the British and the remainder were completely ambivalent. Yeah, no, actually about 70%. I, I, well, I mean, back okay, and forth. So I, I, I mean, it went okay. back and forth, but you're right. More than okay, half. So well, let me break it down because it's been looked About half were Tories, and then about 90% uh, of the others were just thumb-sucking on the fence, and it was really overall less than 10% that were against being total slaves. All right, so you have my question then. You've got less than, you know, you only had... Uh, a few a few percentage points of the population was actually for revolution and you only had a few thousand men because you know there was not really you're just talking about men at that point I mean, okay a few women uh, who put that together so now you flash forward to 2012 we're at a similar situation where we're not being occupied by the British we're being occupied by bankers and global bankers and there's five or ten of the major banks and they have us by the throat because they control the money they control the interest rates they control the debt and this is well documented on your show so is are a sufficient number of people in the US right now that are alive and breathing and they are they coming together to do what needs to be done because under the Constitution it says quite clearly that if tyrants take over the government, it's the constitutional responsibility of the people to take back yeah, the government. It's not a right, it's a duty, uh, and, 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 and that's in the Declaration of Independence as okay. well. That's right. It's codified in the Second Amendment. I'm not going to get into more detail than that, but that's where you find it. Is there going to be uh, some kind of attempt to uh, stage a, uh, a new declaration? Well, well here, I mean, here's the problem. The guys back then were not in, in, in Arizona running drones, killing people and getting medals for it. They had been in constant, vicious wars with tomahawks hacking each other up. Both sides used those. And we're just, we're actually uh, very intelligent and formed vicious killers. Okay, and, so and, 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 well, I'm just saying the men are not like that today, no. They were battle ready. They had already... Uh, they were had spent years enduring, you know, going back to the Pilgrims, an extremely rough time in establishing this country. So they were rough and ready, and they took on what they needed to be done. So you're saying that that doesn't exist. You've had too many years of the soft kill, as you say, the the the, the media, the drugs, etc. You just don't have the necessary critical mass to stage the the the, the proper. Uh, re well, I mean, take the, the take the founders. They lost almost every battle the first five years, but they never gave up. It was the resistance that was unstoppable. It was the fact that they were like piranhas. I mean, you know, they would drag with their shoes falling off, literally with blood behind them, you know, a hundred miles, giant Alex, cannons. Alex, do I need to come to Austin?
Oh, we'd love to have you here in Austin. Do we need to come to Austin? Do we need to do we need to get serious and stage the revolution from Austin? You know, Max, if you were serious about that, they they'll come kill you today. Uh, no, the point is we are staging the revolution. Who cares? It's give me liberty or give me death. Let's get it on. I think they call it victory or death. Stay there. Stay there, Max.